It's that special moment of the year, the beginning of the biggest week of bike racing in Flanders. And here we go. Kent Wevelkem in Flanders Fields, where we honor our heroes. Today, Kent Wevelkem moving up to the Flemish Holy Week and the Tour of Flanders next weekend. Today, we begin in Ypres at the Menin Gate. It's windy. It is pretty miserable out there. It's only seven degrees. It's proper classics weather, this, before a finish. Expect at around 5 p.m. local time in Wevelkem on the traditional. At the Menin Gate, this was the scene earlier on today. 10 to 11 when things started. Good crowds despite the poor weather. Always uh, a grand but sombre moment. And as we go through the area today, we will remember with a nod here and there to history. Gone are the days where this race begins in Dens and now we start in Ypres. The first of seven races in Flanders Fields today. One of the big events in this West Flanders region that you will see all year. A Grand Place all nicely dressed up. And some of the best bike riders in the world ready to take on the roads. Nine of the last ten winners are here, including Biniam Girmay, who won for Africa last year. The Antomarché rider becoming the first ever African winner of a cobbled classic. Wout van Aert returns to as does Craig van Avermaet. And Peter Sagan, the latest stop on his farewell tour. Dressed for the weather this time, the Slovakian champion. Racing alongside another former winner. Over a decade ago, it involved Boas and Hagen. Ivan Garcia Cortina on the right there. Looks good the other day in the Edri Press and Harold Becker. Top five for the man from Asturias. Looks like he's coming into form. Stefan Kuhn's not really been out of form since the start of the year. Former Swiss champion, time trial star here with Armand Demar, Louis Aski, and the rest. It's a good team for Groupama FDG. The experience of Sepp von Marke, also in form at the moment. Is this to be his year finally to bring home another big one? Former winner of the Omlop at Newsblad at the start of his career when he famously beat Tom Boner. Up against the former winner of this race, Alexander Christoph, who now races with the Norwegian team Uno X's jersey on his back. Filippo Ganna. Increasingly a man for these moments. Believe it or not, it's been four years since he started a Flemish one-day race, but he turned up the other day and looked very, very good in the Edri Press. Tim Wellens is invariably here. Today he's not supporting Pogaccia, though, but he's got a team of several strong riders in and around him. Matej Mohoric loves this kind of weather. He thrives on it. He's going to be a rider to watch today, as will be the entire Bahrain victorious squad. All smiles for him. Winner last year, a member of Milano Sanremo. Another former Sanremo winner, Jasper Sterve, at home in Flanders. He comes from east of the capital in Lerva, but he's here in the far west of the country. With his Trek Segafredo team, a team that includes Mars Pedersen as well, in form, on fire, you'd say, and has a good shot at winning today. So to Jasper Philipsa, one of the informed sprinters in the world. This race one that can end in sprints, can have just about anything going on. Jasper Philipsa is a man for all seasons. No Mathieu for the pool today. So options for him and for Søren Kral to try and do the business for Alpacina Koenig. Arnold Uli, finally here in Kent Wevelkim. Today could be the day for a very special debut. Belgium's next big promise up against the Australian sprinter Caleb Ewan. Not quite on the ball yet this year, but always a man who can get up and down the Kemmelberg. Can he get to the finish today and win a sprint? Are some very brave souls in Ypres this morning under the Abrolis. Talking of fast men, Tim Medley, Belgian champion. 
what a sight it would be if he could do something today. He's alongside the European champion and his teammate Fabio Jakobsen. Sudar quick step, leaving nothing to chance and bringing plenty of opportunities to take it to the rest. And boy, do they need a victory in their races that compose the DNA of that team. Wad van Aert, starting for sixth time. He's there with Christophe Laporte and the rest of the Jumbo Visma team. Van Aert victorious on Friday. Interesting to see what Jumbo Visma do today. They have been the dominant team so far in cobbled Flemish racing this season. They've got their fans, young and old. Some more dressed for the weather than others. And here comes the star. Crowned a global superstar when he won this last year. He went on to win a stage at the Giro d'Italia. Binyam Girmay, who this time last year was being labelled by the Flemish press as the next Tom Bona. He greeted his Eritrean fans and was ready to try and bring more success for them. He also races, remember, for a Belgian team. Somber reminder for the riders of where they are about to race. Flanders Fields, where the Great War took place. Along the route today, we will remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Racing on the way then at 10 to 11. Neutral start out there first. But all eyes on what was going to be an entertaining and attacking start. All smiles for now. We'll check back on those expressions and sentiments at 5 p.m. Scott Sullivan gets the warmth of the car. A quick flag wave and we were off. And it will be a very active first hour. In fact, no, hour and a half. Ridden at 45 kilometers per hour today. So Kent Wivel came in Flanders Fields for the 85th time, 260.9 kilometers, a mainly flat race, but with nine climbs coming in a section of racing that's just 60 kilometers long. That though comes after they go through the mighty Mura. The Mura and Werner. One of the windiest places on the planet. And in bike racing, perfect setup to try and make the difference. Back through Popperinge and into the hill land, starting with the Scherpenberg. But the identifier for this race is, of course, the Kemmelberg. Nine hills, three plug streets, and then the run in for the final 30 kilometers to Wevelchem on the flat. It's Kent Wevelchem in Flanders Fields in 2023. Time to go live. This is the breakaway. There are 160 kilometers still to go. But looking at it straight away, you will notice that it is a rather big one. And if you place your eyes right in the center of this group, you will see a former winner had Olympic champion, Greg van Avermaet, who's won this race before, the man who's in the breakaway, and that is the name that will set off alarm bells. We know he's not in the greatest of form at the moment. Had a miss San Remo because of flu, but Greg van Avermaet in a breakaway could be a mighty dangerous thing. He's up there with another, what do we have, 13 riders with him. It's a mightily big group full of riders who are either young up-and-coming riders or strong men like this man here, Guillaume from Kerspulk, who's up the road with the likes of Yellow Allies and Mike Turnus, a sprint stage winner at the Tour de France, and of course Yellow Jersey wearer. The man on your screen now is Yevgeny Fedorov. He's been in plenty of these breakaways in his short career so far. And completing the lineup, we have Joyson Dujardin from Boven, from Puka, Fretan, Reinders, Biermons, Jacobs, Aski, 
Wallace, former winner of Dwarf of Vlaanderen. And of course, the aforementioned Van Avermaet and Turnesser. It's a mighty group up the road, and you can see by the formation in which they're riding, the wind is blowing. It isn't the strongest of winds that can blow in this part of the world, heading out towards the North Sea course. This race used to take in the entirety almost of the North Sea coast. But inland, wind blowing across, speeds of around 15 to 20 kilometers per hour. But it's the rain, the wet, the miserable conditions that are going to cause the problems today. So with 160 kilometers just over to go, it's a gap of three minutes and 27 seconds. And plenty of riders in there who have given their teammates behind in the bunch the afternoon off, really. Certainly for now, they only have to follow. Plenty of teams who are not represented in the breakaway, but of the 25, only 13 are not represented, so it's going to be down to the likes of Sudal, Quickstep, Alpacine, etc., to do the chasing. Jumbo Fisma as well. You'd think they'd have the power, but they can't afford to hang around today. That's the reason, maybe, that this group hasn't been given the biggest of advantages. Hear the wind blowing, can't you? The FX microphone. It's going to be one for all of us to sit, watch, and just admire whatever the result today. Being out there in the race is a victory in itself. It is miserable, I can tell you. It was seven degrees. I'm sad you're talking to you at the finish line. We will hear and there are umbrellas up everywhere, lots of hats, scarves, and coats. This day on the calendar usually brings us a lottery. Here it was nigh on 20 degrees in sunshine. And this year, well, it speaks for itself. The cars are all in there. And it took a while for everybody to get sorted and settled. Two groups come together in the last 15 minutes or so. feeding going on right now. There is Fedorov, good strong rider. One of his teammates, by the way, non-starter to tell you about today. Mark Cavendish was down to ride this race for Astana, Kazakhstan. He hasn't started, neither has Ugo Ul. Ben Perry not here. Andrei Ponomar, the Ukrainian young star. Neither is Rick Flabel nor Otto Vergarde. Six riders not starting today and for various reasons. Here's our first look at the peloton. These narrow flat roads. Looks like it's a fight for position here. Doesn't look like we've one particular sole team chasing though. Because they know we're about to head into an area where anything can happen with a win. That's why the likes of Sagan staying close to the front. On closer inspection, it is Tim de Klerk who's doing mace, most of the work, being helped a little by Jos van Emder. This is the uh, since six to Sabi in Wisfleter. Famous Trappist beers produced here. And we're going to pass a couple of breweries later on. We'll see some Barnadus as well. But the riders today will deserve a drop of this or two. Whatever their position in the final rankings. And brewery tour is a big thing you can do around here as well. Behind on the road where we are fixing our gaze at the moment. It's not just the usual habitual look at a peloton chasing, isn't it? That arrowhead formation there. Lined up left and right. 
And there's so many nerves already in this race, still with 158 kilometers to go. I say it took a, an hour and a half, really, for the breakaway to go today. With all this going on behind, the gap has gone down to about three and a quarter minutes now. Riders moving up and just trying to find their teammates. Sven Emden on the right hand side with Tim de Klerk. They had been doing the riding. It's a mixture of everybody right now. Shvizniowski left hand side in the pink helmet. Alberto Betio with him. It's going to be a job for all of us just identifying who's who today. <laughs> it is that sort of day out there. And there's Jake Stewart. Navy on the left just with the cap sticking up. Look at this group. There are 14 riders. No wonder they're not being given too much time. It's a really, really dangerous, dangerous group, this. To an area where the wind will blow across the road. Here we go. Into the Muda. Well, not the time to go back to the car, really. The way the wind's blowing. Make sure you stick where you are. That is Mike Turner, sir. Certainly not as hellish as it can often be at this time of year, the wind blowing around there. There is a bit of wind, though. Enough to get the windmills blowing. And that is the uh, Sterke Beermill. Close to the French border up here, but of course the Belgian flag flying very proudly. Just outside of the town of Werner here. Heading up to Alveringham. After that, we'll go to Popperinge. But it's through the Muda where you can probably sense that nervousness in the peloton behind. That's why it's building up going through this section. Breakaway staying together and just gonna they have to keep their foot on the pedals because with all of the nervousness behind going into this open crosswind section. The peloton behind, well, they're certainly going to be putting on the pace. And you can see it reflected in the time gap. 3.08 here. It's come down from 3.30 as Mike Turnus is trying to get sorted. As well as the wind blowing here, you can see the road composition, it's the traditional Belgian beton weg, the concrete slabs. The valley of death, if you like, through the centre where you don't want to get that bike wheel stuck. Just wide enough for a tyre to fit in, those things. And the breakaway, the section through the murders passing off with that incident. Incidents, though, already behind. Oh, no, 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 no. Jonathan Milan, pursuit star, has lost his chain now. Has he hit the deck? And certainly the doctor coming up, so it suggests he might have done. There's been an issue that yeah, left-hand side, you can just see he's come down on his left-hand side. I think a little bit of skin there. It's seen worse, though. A bit of magic spray on at the same time. I need to get back on his bike and going into the Muda. One of the worst places on the road today that this could happen. Because there surely will be so much of a collection of nerves here at the front. And the wind is not howling, but it's always just about enough in this region if somebody wants to make the difference. Look at that long, wide open stretch of road. Question is, does a team want to make that difference? Has it a guess that no is the answer with 154 Ks to go and the way the race is set up? 
but you just never know. And everybody wants to be in the same position. In the end, if everybody follows that, it can be a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy and you can get the splits without anybody really trying. The ride is stopping for a comfort break, though, suggesting that they don't think too much is going to happen. Conversation there between uh, Dick Gleddock and a few of his colleagues. And Dick Gleddock on the left hand side is a man whose finish line will be rather prior to the race finish line. His job is to try and close things down. Yves Lompart on his back towards the front as well. And, uh, Beret von Leeberg, yeah. It's the rider just sitting in second wheel there. So nothing really doing so far in the Muda. And the cleric just starts to put his foot down a little. Is left and right as well. You see that wind gets going. There's a few places you don't want to end up. You are bringing your armbands if you get stuck in that thing. 15 kilometers from the northeast, 15 kilometers per hour. So it's blowing across the road. a little hit or miss here. Certainly not blowing a gale though as breakaway heads towards Werner now. In terms of our hilly zone today, that doesn't start until we get inside the final 100 kilometres. 55 k's from now, we'll hit the Scherpenberg. And the race does become another after that. And also changes because a lot of riders won't know exactly how the legs are until they hit those hills. i will come after 165 kilometers of racing as well. Not quite the Poggio effect in San Remo. You've got it coming after 280 k's or so. This correct for Navramat then, on the podium twice, third. A decade ago, I had a winner six years ago now. And the Craig van Avermaet fan club are out as well. Remains a hugely popular figure in Belgium. Form off the boil for a while, hasn't it? But he won the Olympic Games in Rio. 41 wins in his career. Nothing, though, since before the COVID pandemic. Incredible to think that it's been three and a half years since Greg van Avermaet won a bike race. That came in Montreal. And his last top year, 2017, 2016 and 17 were his golden years, weren't they? As we see Johan Jacobs back in the breakaway again and Kent Wevelkim. He's back with Yellow Allies actually on that front. Yellow Allies was in the break for 162 Ks last year. Allies in the red of Kofidis just sitting towards the back. Second to back wheel as we look at it. Front there in the blue is Elmar Reinders. Rider from the Netherlands, racing for the Australian team. This year renamed Jaco Alula. Reinders is 31 now. 
and part of what is a 14-man breakaway here. In contrast to the 41 wins in Fanavramat's career, Enders has yet to win a bright race in professional cycling. He's been around the block in smaller teams. This is his first opportunity on the World Tour. Signed for Jake Lula last year to be part of the lead-out train. It's now with Dylan Grunewegen in their ranks, and today Grunewegen, well, he's back in the peloton. This in the meantime, you have Genny Girik. Takes a bottle from his Italian sports director. Now the team from Kazakhstan. Didik is one of the three riders from Kazakhstan in the team today. He's in the breakaway we've been seeing. Yevgeny Fedorov. Tim Leclerc's at home in West Flanders. He knows these roads like the back of his hand. of Taco van der Horn on the left-hand side in the fluorescent yellow. Black rain jacket on. Has a job to do today. You wonder whether he might be off and out in the breakaway. Could have been given that freedom, but it was Mike Turnisser who got himself up the road instead. It means that Binyam Girmay and his team don't have to chase. Girmay who started the season really well. Ever so slightly off the ball since coming back from an injury. Top 20 in Milan Turin. Top 30 in San Remo. That one podium in Tideno as well. Now then. Oh dear. I'm sure they asked for a shower. Brave in all that weather as well. Occupational hazard being a bike fan. Things have calmed down a little in the peloton now. Away from the Muda. It's still blowing though. Always, always a danger at this race. I think back to Wednesday afternoon in the Brucca de Pana race that came on these roads. Yes, it was rainy, but we had the wind as well, the whole collection. And a race that's often won for the sprinters. Turned into a mighty, full-blown cobbled classic. Too many of the cobbles around, but the style of racing. Hard fought for the hard men. this today, the screech of disc brakes as they come into and out of every corner. The Dutch time trialist Jos van Emden, who's at the front here. This is for the Dutch team, led by a Belgian today, and Wout van Aert, who won this race two years ago. Looks as though for the minute there's just the two riders riding. Just the two teams, Sidal Quick Step and Jumbo Visma. Ars Pedersen, a few riders already in shorts. Certainly is at least a leg warmer's day, isn't it? Always going to be that will to be up at the front here, Not just because of the wind, but also the narrow roads, the lefts and rights. Worries about being caught behind a crash.
up in the break. They've just got to keep riding. See if they can get into a position where once they get onto the hills, something can happen. Don't have a, a good gap here, but they've got good numbers. Two riders in there from the renamed this year Flanders Balois team. Aron van Poeke and Milan Fretten. Both young riders yet to really taste their first success. Van Poeke has been in several breakaways in the last couple of years, though. Already this year, it's his third breakaway of the season. And two early on in the Tour of Andalusia at the start of the year. on the left there, skipping left and right either side of a huge gap between the concrete slabs. And he's working hard all day. And then seeing that hard work destroyed by a silly crash as we go into our sector of cobbles here. Onto the uh, leslerdorp Wernerstraat. 1.3 kilometres long. Cobbles are going to be wet today as well. Certainly a factor when we get towards the steep section of the Kemmel later on. More an annoyance than a hindrance here, though. Panic has disappeared from the peloton. Well, the nerves rather than full blown panic, I should say. Gap at three and a quarter minutes where it's being well kept by Fernanden and the Cleric. Oh, Filippo Ganna just behind. Time trial superstar for the Ineos Grenadiers. Team today that is a mixture of experience and youth. Young Kim Hyduk racing for them with Ben Turner as well and Magnus Sheffield. Narvaez, Kwiatkowski, the former world champion, alongside Connor Swift. Now right in the same team as his cousin Ben, of course. Ben Swift currently on a an altitude camp in Sierra Nevada, preparing for the Giro d'Italia right now. Three weeks up on the mountain. The cold up there, but they'll probably get the sunshine. It's cold and miserable today here in Flanders. Well, a lot of you who remember the history of this race will know that it used to go into France. No French trip for the last few years. We do skirt the border. Climbs such as Mont Cassel, the Katzberg, the Cockerel Berg, Vermont, Mont Noir, Ravelplut, Ravensburg, they've all disappeared. And as you can see, 40 riders of the 168 who started today are experiencing this not new route, it's been given a new identity for the last few years, but experiencing Kent Wivel again for the first time, which is a rather unique race, certainly with the 30Ks running or so afterwards. Many other classics like this one. It's a classic that also has monument distance, 260 kilometers, even though it is not in the monument category. Monuments, of course, for those of you maybe tuning in for the first time, the five biggest one-day races of the season. We've already had the, work, the first, I should say, last weekend in San Remo. Next comes up next weekend. Finishes in Aldenara. The Ronde of Vlaanderen, the Tour of Flanders.
Oh, crash, crash, crash. Rider down from the Ineos Grenadiers. Slipping and sliding out there. Trying to work out who that is. I know that uh, the rain jacket on. There had been Filippo Ganna close to the front. Is he still in this line? Not sure he is, you know. Try and get another look at that in a minute. Racing goes on, but a crash behind. And it is Filippo Ganna who's gone down. Filippo Ganna who's gone down. So even in a fairly innocuous moment like that, you know that something can happen, certainly in these conditions. That's before we start. Ascending and descending. Bad news then for Ineos Grenadiers. Ganna down. We're waiting to see what the results of that are. And we're hearing that Hes von Hooker of Human Powered Health has abandoned the race as well. Here's von Hooker, former teammate of Greg Van Avermaet in the break today. He has abandoned the race for his American team, Humor Powered Health. Just see behind as well, riders. Ever so slightly struggling to get back on. Caught up maybe behind that crash. They will make it back on. So the abandons coming in. Here's von Hooker, the latest to climb off his bike. Filippo Ganna has gone down. And just under three minutes now. Peloton travelling ever so slightly quicker here than the breakaway. You can see the difference of speed up on the top left-hand side of your screen now. Peloton a bigger group and wanting to stay safe through these Sleeping policemen. All part of racing in Belgium, this. Yeah. Jakobsen moves up left and side. And for Sudal, quick step, the wolf pack. To Leazella. More of these town centre cobbles. No, we're not talking Paris Roubaix here, but in the wet here, they can be dangerous. So then when you're twisting, turning at high speeds. Jakobs here just wanted to stay out of the way of trouble. Interesting to see what he will do, whether he'll make it. The options are for him, or if it's all in for Tim Medlier. Can he get over the camel? If you can, there's all those extra accelerations you have to make at the back here. It is not a pleasant place to be out there right now. One long line as well. 
days to the, the motivation might be called into question as well. Little wonder why. Kupsa just sits back on the wheel of Tinder Klenik. Tim Mohoric making sure he's close to the front. There's quite a few riders from Sudar Quick Step up there now. Just keep your eye on this. Kispa Askren up there in fifth wheel. And Berger is the other rider. The wind is blowing us across the road. Oh, big crash. Big crash. Looks like it is Ukash Wisniewski. Oh, no. Man who's had a decent record down the years in Flanders. Never won a race, but he's been second in the Omlopid News Lab before. Up there in the top five in Kurna. Now then, Jakobs has started to ride a little bit here. And there is a danger that might be a split or two in the peloton. There is a split or two in the peloton. Never mind the Muda, it could be happening here. I look behind. Sudal Quickstep, we're getting the numbers up there. The wind is blowing across the road and it is echelon alarm. You never know when this racing can get going. The answer is right now. Now, does this continue? Or will things calm down? Tim Melier is up here in the front. Matej Mohoric has made it. That's Jasper Philipsa. Narvaez, Kwiatkowski. Now, who carries on here? Where's the likes of Walt van Aert and company? It's a small group, this, and we're still in rather exposed land. And if you've missed the split now, might not be over, but there's always the chance that this is the moment you miss that move. Just as it looked as though things were calming down. Three groups out there. And we're hearing that uh, Lukasz Wisniewski, I'm afraid, has abandoned the race. This is Matteo Trentin in the meantime not having his time. So can that second group work to get in? How hard is the first group working to try and keep everybody out of it? it looks as though we're back at the front, really, with the Cleric and Fernenden. Now, is Fernenden going to come through and ride? Is it going to be hard enough? I'm not sure, you know would suggest that Wout van Aert might not be in here. Peloton split into three, and there's the confirmation of the abandon of Łukasz Wisniewski. Now Bahrain start a ride. They've realised that this could be a moment for them to put the pressure up. We know that Sudal Quickstep will want to contribute. That's Connor Swift. But in those Grenadiers. Alexander Kristoff's made this front spot. And Bahrain seemed keen. Fabio Jakobsen looked keen as well. Just trying to keep this going. Second group looks like it might be about to get in. Just twisting, turning, wind changing direction all the time. There's a big right turn coming now. The feeling that Bahrain maybe just wanted the position there. A couple of riders on the front for Jumbo Visma suggest that in this group a lot of their riders will be involved. There's another Jumbo Visma rider involved in uh, the group at the back as well. Peloton well. Peloton still in three parts. Looks as though parts one and two are going to come back together though. That wind's still blowing. It 
So now quick step are keen here. This is good to watch. Bahrain victorious joining them. And the work that's being done here, by the way, by Fabio Jakobsen suggests that it's all for Tim Medellia today, but we'll see. Second part is in. But you want to be further up, because if it splits again, as there's a suggestion it might do, once more the troubles begin. And after that crash as well, we're hearing that Filippo Ganna has abandoned the race too, alongside Vukas Wisniewski, because we didn't see Ganna on the ground. So in the back of the shot, not good news. And exactly as I was seeing, he just missed the wheels at the back there. You could be drifting back to that next group, and that's what's happening for a few riders. And in the first race that Medlir and Jakobs are riding together as teammates, We've seen Jakobs are committed here. And now Jaco Alula. This is interesting. This is Kellen O'Brien. Did he just find himself in a strange position there? Of course, he's got a teammate up the road. Not sure he's got too many teammates in this group either. Ineos Grenadiers are now putting a turn or two in. This is Peter Sagan. Oh, Sagan in danger. Because that might be Luca Mesgetz as well. Yeah, it is Mesgetz for Jaco Lula. Sagan in danger of missing out. I'm afraid that's been the story of this farewell tour so far. I already get the feeling that the list of abandonments at the end of this race might be large. And we haven't even got to the hills yet. Trentin back in. It's a different day today for UAE Emirates. No Bogacar to look after. He'll be back for the Ronde of Flandre next Sunday, by the way. Oh, the Sagan group, will they get back in? Looks as though there's a chance. There's a rider from Agile de Zercitroen. In fact, two riders there. They themselves have confirmed that Benoit Cousinefroy doesn't ride today, but will return for the Ronde next weekend. So Sagan returns for now. A couple of his teammates in this group, those fluorescent yellow rain jackets. And the Cladoc still working hard. Uh, Want to find out exactly who's in that second group. We've had a great look at it, have we? Van Emden has dropped off and. Nobody riding at the front for Jumbo Visma again suggests that there might be a little bit of a problem there for them. Either that or they're regrouping at the back of this group as you see Magnus Sheffield now. Just unzipping. Smiles and laughs for Jake Stewart, the rider from Kulpama. Loves this kind of racing. And we haven't seen this lot for a while, have we? Back with the breakaway. Turner, Safanarmat, Fedorov, Wolais, Aski, Jakobs, and Birmans. And they're joined by Reinders, Freta, Van Puke, Van Bove, Van Kerspolk, Joyce, and Dujalda. It's 14 riders. Three and a half minutes was the maximum gap, but all of that fun and games behind has meant that the gap's gone down to two minutes and 19 seconds for the moment. There is Mike Turner, sir. It seems an age ago since he was winning that opening stage of the Tour de France and pulling on the yellow jersey in Brussels. We now move into Bevera. And from here we go to Poperinje. Very close to the French border.
famous hops museum as well around here. The beer culture lives on. So with Ganna and Wisniewski not finishing and six non-starters were eight down from the original 174 who were due to start. It's calmed down and we're back together. Peloton is back together. So a little bit of fun and games didn't exactly come in the Muda itself, but in the area around it. It looks as though the whole Peloton is coming back now. I'm just looking down. There was no panic there from Jombo Visma, but I feel they had a problem or two, you know, because they stopped riding. Now you can see that Fernanda has returned towards the front. He's just sitting third wheel. necessarily have been their main man but we know that Jumbo Visma work rather like the quick step team used to work strength in numbers and well if you're in that last peloton make that effort now because again with the Kledek working on the front another twist and turn the wind blowing once more the gap just seems to open that elastic that snapped he's taken a while to stitch back together isn't it Riders get back as many moving up towards the front as possible, keen to avoid the same problems. Nata for Hoidok, who was key in this race a couple of years ago when Wat van Aert took the victory. Really turned into one of the top domestiques, certainly in classics racing in the world. Every year just seems to get that little bit better. about the strength in numbers, weren't we? In Sudan quick step, well, most top three places in Kent Wilhelm since 2000. Nine top tens. They have quite the record, don't they, in the last couple of decades, but they're a team that is evolving and changing. Now, of course, with general classification aims and while we watch this race, they are watching to see if Remco Evenepoel can turn the tides and take the leader's jersey away from Primoz Roglic over in Catalonia. Final day in Barcelona there today. Now, Fernard just being moved up on the right-hand side of the picture. The black rain jacket with a yellow stamp on it. If you're looking for Wart van Aert, he has a slightly different helmet than the rest of his teams. So the yellow and black, it's the multicolored design of a very well-known energy drinks brand, personal sponsor of his. See Alex Kirsch going back for new clothes, and it's going to be a big job today for everybody. Staying warm, staying dry as well as much as you can. Senses it's an impossible job, but Kim Hajduk is trying to do that for the Ineos Grenadiers. Also, get rid of clothes himself. He'll have a quick chat there with Roger Hammond, who's an experienced sports director, a good former classics racer himself, Roger Hammond.
second in this race in 2007. Second in Marshall Flander on the podium in Paris Roubaix. Used to live and train in this area. Into Beatmonts. Belgian rider racing for the French team up here. Now then, here he is. Art van Aert just sitting on the wheel there of Matej Mohoric, who's on the radio. Oh, no, 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 no. More crashes and more names down. Looks like Narvaez is there. Stuart is back on his feet after he crashed. A couple of riders from Lotto Destiny as well. Ivan Garcia Cortina back on his bike and going again. And it is Kim Haiduk who was on his way back from taking all of those jackets and what have you. In fact, the graphic tells us it's Kwiatkowski. In fact, it is Kwiatkowski. It is the former world champion, Mihal Kwiatkowski. And that is not good news. Looks to be in some pain there. They've already lost Filippo Ganna to a crash. And two of their classics leaders, just as we come into the hot point of the classic season. Strange, silly crashes at the back, but the nerves, the weather all playing a part. Now then, this is Milan down for a second time today. Just in the far side of your picture. In the meantime, Jack Stewart's taking the opportunity to get rid of a rain jacket. And it looks as though it might well be race over for Mihal Kwiatkowski, I'm afraid. The question is, will it be classic season over? Because that does not look good. Milan's going to try and take a bike. Still 125 kilometers to go here. The weather playing his part now. How did this happen? Something in the road or a touch of wheels there. It is Kwiatkowski who goes down. A few going with him. A rider from Unix as well being caught out there. Rider who is not Alexander Christoph. Oh, Mihal Kwiatkowski is up and walking, which is good news, but he looks dazed and not in a great place. And I think that is Mihal Kwiatkowski, the former world champion, abandoning this race, and the Ineos Grenadiers have been decimated by crashes today. Ganna, non finisher. Kwiatkowski going the same way. And only halfway through the race. Start next up on small, keeping their main riders up to the front. You see the Belgian flag coloured helmet of Tim Melliard. It's more a nervous race than an explosive one this today. Time for the latter. Seen the Koenig being called for a puncture. One of their riders having a puncture at the back. There's all that sort of stuff as well. There's plenty to deal with mechanics and sports directors today. Two twenty-four in the graphic, two forty-four being called out by the race radio, by the way. Nevertheless. Keep our eyes on the nervous bunch behind. A 
reminder if you're just joining us that there's a breakaway of 14 riders at the front, including Craig van Avermaet. Forty-five point one kilometers per hour, the speed in that third hour of racing that we've just finished. And the wind is absolutely battering them here. We're approaching, oh, we're just under thirty kilometers now away from where we get to the hills. Battle resumes the peloton, really. Might is able to go and get food. Above his merc, continue to chase. Joining Sudal Quickstep. And this was that puncture. Looks as though Sylvain Dillier. So good in Milano San Remo. What was his first race of the season? He's got some catching up to do here. Swiss champion. This is that back wheel. Tynecop Cemetery and Memorial at Sonnebecker. A sobering sight, and one that brings memories that shall and will never be forgotten. Of all those that gave the ultimate sacrifice in this part of the world over a century ago. Thousands of people every year coming from all over the world to visit relatives who gave that ultimate sacrifice and whose memories are left here. It is a sight that can take your breath away. In the most remote fields it's a beautiful part of the world. Suddenly you come across one or two of those, and if you needed the reminder, there it is. Each year on this race now in Kent Kim in Flanders Fields, we honor our heroes. It's two local heroes, Lompart and De Klerk, to West Flemings in conversation there, second and third wheel. No need to put any posh telephone voices on for those two. <laughs> Speaking in their strong West Flemish dialect. We all remember back to the Tour de France, don't we? And Yves Lombard's emotional words that he was just a farmer's son from Flanders. Edo Watu.
And this is the Memorial Museum at Passendala, 1917 in Sonnebeck. Yep. Memorial to the battle. And again, I was just saying one of the many sites that is visited by the thousands and thousands of people who come each year. The Battle of Passendala was one of the greatest in the whole of the Great War. You can go and have a look at the structure of the trenches that have been kept there. And the eucalyptus trees planted in the pattern of the Australian flag and provide a symbolic reminder of the many hardships endured by particularly Australian men and women during the First World War. Now then, this is Lewis Askey. Twenty-one years of age from Cannock, in Great Britain. He's having quite the second year, been in really strong form. Second breakaway of the year. A good cobbled classic in Belgium already when he was fifth in the Nogrukusa. And you're looking now also in Sonnebeck at the Brothers in Arms Memorial, dedicated to all the brothers who fought together in the war, but who often did not return home together. The bronze statue you can see represents the Hunter Brothers. In 2006, five Australian soldiers were exhumed along the West Hook Ridge. One of the soldiers was John Hunter, who was buried at the site by his younger brother, Jim. And the project, of course, received permission from singer Mark Knopfler of British rock band Dire Straits to use the lyrics of his world-famous song, Brother in Arms, incorporated into the memorial. The Brothers in Arms Memorial in Sonnebecker. Well, three posts in the middle of the road. This has been on the race radar for a little while. It's being pointed out to everybody. Thankfully, everybody gets through it safely. The unmovable objects on the race. Thankfully, everybody getting around OK. So 116 kilometers to go. Ah, I said we were going to go past here. St. Bernardus Brewery as well. The latest in the brewery tours that we're seeing as well. the rooftop going as well. I'm not quite sure it's time for an open air pint up there today though. It's more likely to be one in front of the fire we've got the telly on with it. Of course watching the cycling. They are suffering today so you don't have to. Tim de Klerk, Jos van Emden and company. To see that other teams are starting to make sure that their riders are up the front as well. Tim Wellens there for UAE. They have Pascal Ackerman here. And Uno X looking after Alexander Christoph in those orange, yellow and red jerseys. Now, problems for Azure is out. Citroën. A couple of bike changes.
Laurens Rex there. 115 kilometers to go. 14 riders got away up the road earlier on today. Turnison, Van Avermaet, Federov, Wallais, Aski, Jacobs and Biermonds. Joined by Renders, Fretan van Poeke, Van Boven, Van Kerspulk and Joyce. Sandy Dujardin was in there. I wonder if he's had a little bit of an issue. No longer present in the front group. You've had a little bit of wind. I can just spot Dujardin a little further back. Graphics operators maybe not seeing him. There are 14 riders up there. Group of eight plus six that got away when it was windy. Fastest start to the race. Fourteen riders with two and a half minutes including the former winner, Greg van Avermaet. Mike Turnison's there as well. Yellow Allies, winner of Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen. This is a really good quality break in the 85th edition of Kent Wevelkem in Flanders Fields. Not quite as windy as it can be in this area, but the wind has been blowing. The rain has not stopped falling all day. It's cold, it's miserable. It's a day out there for the hard men. There is Van Avermaet. On the podium as well, ten years ago, and he was third. As we see Dilma Reinders there. Le Sama was his best result in a cobbled classic, eighth place. Oh, we're hearing a crash behind. Crash behind. Oh, and it's the defending champion. It's the defending champion, Biniam Girmay. He's had an issue. It's called out as a crash, and the doctor's here to check on him. He looks OK, but the defending champion, Binyam Girmay, has gone down. And that's one of the biggest incidents we've had today. But they we've already seen Filippo Ganna crash out. Michal Kwiatkowski also go off in an ambulance. But Binyam Girmay going down, looking OK, back on his bike. And there will be a moment of panic here for Anto Marché. This is how it happened. Thankfully, it looks as though the post is well covered and it didn't occur at great speed. Energy, though, that the defending champ didn't want to have to use. I've already seen several Eritrean flags at the finish today. The man who gave an entire continent its first Cobble Classic win last year. And a little bit of trouble in his title defence. Lesson hook military ceremony. And in Popperinge. Yeah. Today's theme is Africa. We tend to, each year on this race, recognize those who lost their lives here from all over the world and there are 29 South Africans buried in Lesenthoek. The largest uh, evacuation hospital was on that field before it was turned into a uh, cemetery. 4,000 beds. Those are just staggering. And 30 different nationalities as well as those 29 South Africans 
carried in less and took. Maurice Ballerstedt, German rider for Alpes in the Kerning. Conversation there with Mr. Rudolf. And we're now approaching 15 kilometers until the climbs. It's a group of 14 riders there. It's uh, Sandy Dujardin is in this group. There he is, just in the blue tights there, three quarters. Yellow rain cape on as Nick van Avermaet was looking for a change of rain cape, I think. And whatever happens, it's certainly a way to get the kilometres back in the legs after an enforced absence away for a few days for Van Avermaet. It wasn't really his self, was he, on Friday in the Edri press, and perhaps feels he needs another hard day out here before we get into the high mass of the Flemish Holy Week, which is next Sunday. The Hogmis, the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Van Avermaet now on this stage in his career will know his body know exactly what he needs to try to be competitive. Of course, the Ronde van Vlaanderen is still the one he dreams of winning. Monument winner, of course, in Paris-Roubaix, Olympic champion. The Ronde van Vlaanderen is the race that he wants to win. It's a poppering, yeah. Average race speed above 45 kilometers per hour today. Doesn't look like slowing. Fighting for every corner still here. Coming Gradic doing a big job keeping Mate Mohoric safe. Two minutes thirty. Staying stable. There's a real war of attrition today. And different teams bringing their riders towards the front. No longer just uh, the Clerican van Emden. This is Oliveira now. Good solid rider, good track rider as well from Portugal. It's in the black and white of UAE. Nios, just their five riders left now. Led by Magna Sheffield. Talbot House, concert hall next to it as well, it was the Soldier's House, founded by Chaplain Toby Clayton and named after his colleague Neville Talbot, who died at the front. It was an everyman's club where everybody was equal in rank and position, the first of its kind in the world, in fact. It was the former hop store at the back of the garden where they used it to make the beer. That was used as a concert hall back then. Top floor was an Ang Anglican chapel. Soldiers could borrow books, give their cap in as a deposit. Since then, barely anything's changed in the interior. And you can go and stay in the very same rooms that were used back in the war. It's the Talbot House, and if you'd like to visit, that's in Popperingham. Yeah. 
It's Tim Leclerc taking a toot on the sponsor's beadle. Sponsors of the rival team shows that he's been sharing supplies with the man he's been working with at the front, Jos van Emden. And we're hearing that Binyam Girmay is back in the peloton. A couple of teammates helping him back. And there he is on the top right hand side of the picture. Back in the peloton, Binyam Girmay, the defending champ. That's better news for Ante Marche, but. How the leg's going to be after all this. They're not far now from where riders will stop. They get an idea. They've been racing for over 150 kilometres. Over three hours of racing. And you can just see a few hills appearing in the background now. To the Hervels. First of them will be the Skerpenberg. First climb of the day coming after 166 kilometers in the saddle. The first of nine climbs that all come within the space of 60 k's. That's where the likely selections of this race are going to be made. It's going to happen from the breakaway though. wind just to see what happens in two minutes time when the peloton hit that section this is Stefan Kung in the meantime and rain jackets and things soon be getting ready for action there's Mahmoud you're doing the driving today Mahmoud you're in calm mode you're probably thankful given he's doing the driving <laughs> Another couple of things. Food and clothes, new gloves as well. And one by one they go back. Asqualon making sure that alongside Kamil Gradic, Bahrain victorious are in the right place. This is the Popperding and New Military Cemetery, a British-French cemetery. It holds a rather sad record of having the highest numbers of executed soldiers in the same cemetery, 17. The two religious Belgian women are laid to rest here, Frasia Vanesta and Sister Juliana, who died at the age of 51 on the 14th of July, 1917. She worked as a nurse at the Elizabeth Hospital and was fatally hit by a German rocket. Second grave is that of Sister Martha de Klerk, also probably a nurse, and she died there on the same date in 1917. <laughs> Two and a half minutes for the breakaway. We're heading to Herverland, the deciding area of Kent Werwolkamp.
C'est sans doute du jardin. He was on the attack a couple of times in Paris Nice. A decent start to the season, or at least an aggressive start to the season. It's Jente Birmans. Rider in this break who's taken a win so far this season. He won the Muscat Classic in Oman, a new race. One day race preceding the Tour of Oman. And look at the roads they're on here. Again, narrow, windy. There'll be a bit of stress in the peloton just to fight for position when they get here now. Just see now, particularly Bahrain victorious are making sure they are where they need to be. Now then, issues. It looks as though it's a problem for one of the big name riders at Trek Segafredo for Edward Turns. And down the road in Kent. Just keep your eye on the front of this bunch now as they look to try it. And make sure that they're in the right place. It was just that positioning. Teams are all in there. And your Grenadier is being led by Connor Swift on the right, as we look at it. Still Gradic on the left. 18 Belgians on the podium since 2000 here. Seven wins. Last of those coming two years ago with Wout van Aert. aren't quite there if you're off the back this is going to be a hard place to be today never is easy in bike racing is it but there's some kind of him educations being handed out to the 40 deputants today and those who've done it before and they know it's a lottery with the weather Shane Archibald riding for Bora Hansgrohe. Riding with Sam Bennett today, who's 
Already ridden through the place where he was born in Wervik. His father was a footballer in the Belgian league. The Irishman. Good team here for Bora Hansgrohe today, as well as Sam Bennett. The likes of Jordi Meus and Danny van Poppel. Nils Pollitt here too. Really have a team to affect the race in so many different ways. You can just see that we're approaching the climbs and Wart van Aert has made his way towards the front. Not necessarily because there's going to be any move, but he will not want to be out of position any longer. That's Dries Mas of Movistar. Now then, issues for Jasper Philipsen. Oh, front wheel for Philipsen. Nobody with him. And this is bad news for Alpacinda Koenig. The leader for Alpacinda Koenig, Jasper Philipsen, alone puncturing. And just as though we start to head into the hills, Jasper Philipsen has had an issue. Needs to work hard to get back on here. I imagine there'll be teammates surely being made away of the fact that he needs help. This is the sort of race that is right up Jasper Phillips' street here in Thuevelkamp. Hearing that there's a puncture for Kevin Ludanois as well. It's all happening here. Mechanical incidents, punctures. Riders being just dropped because it's a miserable day. That was Jasper Sturva being made. Back onto the peloton. Issue for one of the riders from Israel Premier Tech as well. Back on his bike and going, and that's Dewey Smas, who's just gone uh, out of the shot now from Movistar. Their SM making their presence felt at the front. Today, led by John Degenkolb. Fast men in Kasper van Uden and Pavel Bittner, the young man from Czech Republic as well. This is hide up now at the front. And they're motoring. They have been since the start. 45 average. Le Danois confirmation of what we're hearing about his puncture. Sorted. And trying to get back on now. Breakaway into the feed zone. Not far now from the hill zone. Kilometers so up the road here, and we'll get to the Skerpenberg. Here we go. Starts off 5%. Goes on for 1.2 kilometers. Maximum gradient of 6% close to the top. It's uh, just an order over this. What's uh, the starter for lunch for Greg Van Avermaet there? He's got enough feeling left in the fingers to get the food out.
That's La Claire de Cemetery in the Clade. And two former top division footballers are buried there, as well as South African soldiers belonging to the 3rd South African Infantry Brigade. Uh, the regiment had quite a unique living mascot, Jackie the Baboon. Always to be found with his owner, Albert Marr. Jackie had apparently excellent vision and hearing, used to warn the soldiers of enemy movements or possible attacks by making noises and tugging at their clothing. They had a special uniform and cap made for him, complete with buttons and regimental insignia. But in April 1918, the regiment was heavily shelled in the Clater. Corporal Jackie tried to build a wall of stones around him but was hit by shrapnel. And the ambulance took him to a casualty clearing station where his leg was amputated. Once back in South Africa, he raised money for sick and wounded soldiers. He received usual discharge papers on parchment, a military pension and civilian employment. He died three years later, though, in tragic circumstances. His home farm burned down in South Africa. As well as the sheer numbers and vision, the, the stories are hard to hear as well, aren't they? Peloton now approaching our first climb of the day. Nine of them in total. And the Scherpenberg will be taken on again later on. A couple of loops here. We'll go into the Plug Streets as well after we've done the first climbing loop. And there is Fernando Gaviria. Not look like he's having a good day. Soup alongside him in the yellow and black there, Frenchman. Now Germain knows it's time to be at the front. He's moved on the left-hand side. Alexander Christophe is being kept up to the front as well by Uno X. Wout van Aert through the centre. That black and yellow rain top with the silver, blue, yellow and red helmet belonging to that famous... Energy drink manufacturer. We're hearing of a crash. Hearing of a crash between a Bora rider and maybe some spectators. Well, this has been an incident for Alberto Betio. Looks like it might be mechanical. And all the while here, the breakaway's gap's gone down to two minutes and ten. Pace is hotting up. Dylan Grunewberger in that black rain cape. He's being kept to the front, of course. Any slipping and sliding here from the sprinters will put them in trouble. Just winning the battles for all of those turns. One rider going and overshooting it a little. Now Nils Pollitt moves up. That's our breakaway. The 14 riders is onto the cobbles. The cobbles through town, yep. In through West Alter, and we're on our way now to the Banneberg. Only a short one, Banneberg when we get to it, just 270 metres long. 
Average incline of 9%. Maximum of 13. Riders will climb the Bannerberg twice. Come as the penultimate hill of the day. There's Jacobs at the back there. Best performance for him in Jens Wevelkamp, 16th in 2020. And Lewis Askey continues. It's the 11% section that's 270 metres long. Climb itself a kilometre. Now look at the fight for position behind coming into the climb. Hajduk is there alongside Connor Swift. Red and navy jerseys for Ineos Grenadiers. Pollitt left hand side and this is the part of the race now where teams riders will start to try and maybe kick off depending on who is who Ackerman is being kept up close to the front I've just seen Caleb Ewan in a good position as well Hart van Aert has not moved from his position there is Ewan on the left hand side red jersey light blue helmet for the now relegated Lotto Destiny To the first slopes, it's fairly calm after that fight for position. Yellow Ice just struggling with the bike there in the red. A maximum gradient here of 13%. Well, that's no stranger to these top races. He's an experienced man. He's a winner of Paris Tour on two occasions. Dwarsdorf Landre came eight years ago now. Stage at the Vuelta. Top, top bike rider, the 33-year-old from Rousselade. Coming up to the top of the Bannerberg. The tension will soon turn towards the Monteberg. Last through slopes of the Bannerbeck. Again, it's difficult. Changing in rhythm, changing in gradient. It's Guillaume van Kerspoek here. It's been a while since you've seen him in at his best. This was touted for very, very big things at the start of his career when he was back at Quick Step. Over the top, he takes them. And the famous Leicester Morland. And Herve London restored brilliantly. There to see and admired in all its glory. Built in the early 1800s, fell into disrepair though. And then rebuilt on the Bannerberg. And inaugurated in 1961. A much more calm climb in the peloton.
Oh, Luke, he gets around, doesn't he? You see that famous sign at all sorts of sectors in the classics throughout the spring. Looking at John Dean Corby at the back. And Kevin Van Mark. Convoy coming through at the back of the peloton here. As they go on their way up the twisty, turny final slopes of the Bannerberg. And Niels Pollitt now on the move. Just being followed, just being watched, just being shadowed. Back down to just under two minutes. And this would be a Niels Pollitt time to to go, wouldn't it? Just look at the difference in speed between the front and the back of the peloton. Kevin Vermont, the man from the United States in the black jersey there, wearing on 5-7. Past the last and all them. And down back onto the main road. Well, they start to head towards the Montebank. And following that, we'll have the climb that is the signature climb of this race now. The Kemmel. The danger of the odd split being formed up here. It's all in one long line. Some riders are really keen. Pascal Ackerman is brilliantly placed. He's no longer on the same team as uh, Nils Pollard as we see issues now. For the number 198, number 198, and that's Arnold van from the breakaway. Should get a little bit of help to get back in here. These are those splits I said that were forming. And if you're out of position, your race after all the effort could be over. If it isn't, it's going to cost energy to get back on. Energy you will need on the Kemmelberg. Three ascensions of it, remember. You've got 150 now is the gap and some sprinters really well placed in this front group. Ewan looking brilliant. Mars Pitherson is there as well with his hand in his pocket. Dimit Jasper Sturve alongside him, recovered from that mechanical incident. Søren Kraut, he's on the left as we looked at it then. Right as you missed out, got caught out, are oh, making that extra effort. Reminder that the riders have almost 180 kilometers in their legs on wet roads here. Three hours, 50 minutes of racing. And if they're caught out as they go into this windy area now, trouble will build. Now that for Hoidonk has gone to work. Just protecting Wat van Aert. I was going to talk about the view there, but there isn't much of it we can see. It's that sort of day in West Flanders, I'm afraid. Back to the front of the race. A few rain jackets have been discarded. Not all. 
Sandy Dujardin was at the front. Yellow Elias is still at the back, and we go to the Monteberg. The climb on the flanks of the Camel. Kilometre long. Average gradient of 5%. And the Flemish Farming Union has put on a silent protest, by the way, today. You will see various signs up around. Yeah. It looks as though Yellow Elias's legs are protesting here. Not the man that you had the money on to be the first to be dropped, but it looks as though Elias could be losing contact with 85 kilometres to go. Arnaf Pucker recovering from his issue, able to rejoin the front of the race. And the breaker having to press on now because their gap's being reduced. And this is part of that protest I was telling you about. Peloton now heading this up to the Monteberg. Just before the visit for the first time to Mount Kemen. The Kemen, of course, before we get to it, owes its name to the Celtic god of war, Camulorix. Not only the protector and champion of the people, but also protecting the borders of civilization against what they call the evil from outside. Regularly called on for protection and growth of agriculture as well. In fact, for many centuries, a Celtic noble tribe lived on the Kemmelberg. They controlled the transport of salt inland. Of course, many traces of that were destroyed in World War I. Today, it's the riders who brave the Kemmelberg. Now then, issues... And there's been plenty of these so far today. Dan Orla, latest to suffer a mechanical in this weather. Three climbs down then. And what's left of the breakaway? At the top of the Montebec. Yellow Elias, the first to be distanced. Oh, the time gap is taking care of itself, isn't it? They don't need to worry about that. No real need for commitment. I know the breakaway in front is big, but just with the moves and with the brake tiring itself out, Yellow Elias is caught. The gap's down to 125, and there's 83k still to go. And from the Monteberg, we come to the Kemmel. Famous cobble up the Belvedere side first up. We'll climb up to Osware later on. But this is the side that's going to be taken on twice. And these cobbles today with this gradient, 13% max close to the top, are going to be hard, slippy and horrible to ride. Mike Turner on the right-hand side, a former youth cyclocross star. One rider going backwards out the back. Fretin and Van Puka were there for Flanders Baloise. This is for Kerspulk on the left. And Van Avermaet, if you're just tuning in, Greg Van Avermaet in this breakaway. The winner of this race quite a while ago, 2017 in fact. 
Just 370 metres on the road now because the peloton are also about to hit the camel. They're grinding up. They feel that the brakes can have a different composition. Look to it at the end of this. Even Turnesir here is struggling. And he's one of the bigger names in the group. And thankfully for now, the cobbles are gone. But they don't disappear for too long on this climb. The Hoydonker company hitting it behind. For now, having to move up on the left as we look at it now. It just look full of mud, slippy. It's been filthy weather in Flanders the last few days. And today's not much better. Ewan still looking good. Ackerman, though, slips and slides on this one. The Seneschal. Michael Biel moving up. A reminder for those of you tuning in late too, as we see Arnold de Mar down the back that Filippo Ganna has crashed out and Michal Kwiatkowski was also seen getting into an ambulance after his crash too. They cry, they scream, they cheer. The heroes on the camel. Looking further back as well, I can see that Niels Pollitt is a little further down. Peter Sagan right towards the back here. Riders are just trying to hang on, John Degenkolb. That's Fabio Jakobsen, European champion. And gaps at the front. Now, the, the descent off the back of here is going to be difficult. Each time it's steep, it's sharp, as Van Aert is on the radio there. The medley goes past. Just to see what state the plug streets are going to be in as well today. The gravel sectors, the dirt sectors, the very off-road bits of riding to be done now. It's been one of the legendary sectors in world cycling. And this is that bend that often causes problems. So the break has broken up a bit. And this is the situation here. Biedemont remains, Fedorov is there, Turnisa also. And now this group that's managed to sneak off the front. You could just see on the descent there, Fanat was on the radio. Turner's there for Hoidong. See that Mohoric is in the mix as well. A lot of destiny also represented by what looks like Florian Vermeer. The rider trying to come across. Kevin Ludenois in the meantime is abandoned. And the break is down to 44 seconds now. So Ben Turner back on the bike. Great start of the season, didn't he? Winning the Vuelta Murcia. And then had an injury after Omlop at Newsplad. Back at the Edri Press. And here he is back at the front against Wilhelm. So the race is changing. Milan Freta is the first man to be caught since Yellow Alice. And there are riders all over the place now. What normally happens when we get to the camel? Such a steep section of row in the cobbles, it just puts everybody in their place. Now, who's chasing him? Another man in the yellow and black of Jumbo Visma. 
you know X involved as well. And then Wart van Aert just waits. If he can get two riders up the road and be in a fine position. It's how they played it when he won a couple of years ago with the numbers. And of course, how they looked to play it last year when it was Christophe Laporte who was beaten in the sprint by Binyam Girmay. Some big names in the break today, but unless any of them can hang on when the inevitable happens in just a while, they won't have a say in the final shake-up. Inside the final 80 kilometres now. Ten k's to go until we get to our first plug street. Be Hill 63. Thirty-five seconds the difference between Group One and the first bit of the peloton. Those who just managed to get ahead is Renders for the Aussie team. Colin Joyce is the human-powered health rider. Good fast sprinter from the United States. And we've seen Lewis Askey still showing talent, but discovering what kind of rider he is. But it's for Hoydonk here, alongside Mohoric, Vermeers, Turner and Freta. Freta, remember, important to note that he's just been dropped from the breakaway. And look at Vermeers, he's cold. Trying his best to shove a gel down there. Now Chasers. This is group three on the road, and it's Christophe Laporte yet again who's up there. There's a rider involved from Alpacin. Another rider from Uno X as well. And even in the main peloton, we always get these splits on the camel, which it's taken a while to get organised again, isn't it? We see movement when we get towards the plug streets and in that main peloton you've got riders who are obviously trying to make a dash to get across to that group three chasing that's the one on your screen now in fact groups two and three on your screen group three getting closer and that's going to be really good news again i think for jumbo visma now to for hoidonk and christophe laporte and further up in the race with what for not well positioned behind So Turner knows they're about to be caught and waits. And of course, with the Ineos Grenadiers, there might be slightly more freedom now. As Peterson goes, now this is interesting. Mars Peterson tries to go and wants to be involved. Wart van Aert has representation, two riders up, and he wants others to do the work. But rather than anybody pulling, it's just rider after rider committing to attack. Tactics out the window in terms of control. This is all about getting the numbers up the road. Van Avermaet is trying to consider and consolidate, I should say, pardon me, his position at the front. Mohoric, you just can't stop him, can you? What an aggressive racer. That's what the other day in the Edri Press. Here he is once more. Looks like it might be Sir and Crow on that group for Alpacin. Wait to get a closer look. It's Anthony Turgis, so some big names. And not much bigger than a world champion, a former world champion in Mars Person. Trek Segafredo needing representation. Looks as though they might be about to get it. Big losers in all of this again. Sudal Quickstep. Hello, we're racing in Flanders. Where are you? So break away at the top of your picture. Group two is this group here. With Torgis there on the right hand side. 
Alongside Krau, Laporte, Van Hoydonk, Mohoric, Turner, Van Meersch, Fretin and uh, Nordsat. And about to be joined by Pearson. The biggest name of the lot in here. So 37 seconds. Just getting a shot of Fabio Jakobs at the front of this group. Maybe should our quick steps men were in trouble. We're happy to wait for the likes of Jakobs and Medelier. Looking down for that Belgian champion's helmet of Medelier. If he's there, it's not that easy to spot. Seneschal certainly there. There is Medlier, left hand side. So Sidal quick step. Have everybody organized? They've missed out and they're now working. It is on them here. And it's on Yves Lompart right now. The way that they're organized, the way they've been organized early on in the race as well, I get the feeling that Jakobs may well be behind the weight of a Tim Medlier challenge today. We'll see. Certainly sitting towards the front of that group, just on the wheel of Yves Lompart. And could present the midweek, remember, on Wednesday on the podium in the uh, Brucke de Panna Classic. It's a race that's related to what used to be the three days of the Panna. Used to have the date that led into the Tour of Flanders before the rejig a few years ago. Now then, a different tactic. A completely different tactic. Fabio Jakobsa off the front there. A move from Yves Lompart to set him up. Around 20 seconds to get over to that next group. And these seven teams not in the front of the race at the minute, or the front two groups, and they are Sudal Quick Step. Bora Hanskru, Kofidis, EF Education Easy Post, DSM, UAE and Israel. But here's the chaser and it's rare to see one of the big sprinters doing this, isn't it? This is another reason we love this race. Fabio Jakobsen, one of the top sprinters on the planet, the European champion, is on a solo attack to try and get across to Group 2. And that will pile pressure on the other teams again if they were able to get him across. In the meantime, we're about five kilometers away from our first passage of the three plug streets. Three legs, three legs across a distance of just five kilometers. They've really become a feature of Gent Wilhelm, the plug streets. Helped us learn more about those terrible sacrifices that made for our liberty and in pure racing terms, of course, dialing up the excitement as well. So Turnesser and Van Avermaet. And then you have... This is the all-star group chasing. Pearson, Laporte and company. Don't forget that Vermeers has been up there in Paris-Roubaix as well. And talking of stars, he's nearly there. The chaser, Fabio Jakobsen. First time he's raced in the same team as Tim Medlier. Of course, it was he who had the nod last year at the Tour de France. And the way that Patrick Lefebvre and the team work, you guess that he's going to have to fight for it again. Last year it was against Mark Cavendish. And this year, Tim Medlier has started well, hasn't he? Is he going to get in here?
gets closer. As we get into Mesa. So on our way to the Blook Street zone. Semi-paved roads initially constructed to allow horses and coaches to ride through what was the Plugstert Forest. Plug Street, though, is a reverse, refers to an adulterated pronunciation by the British in the village of Plugstert. Plugstert became Plug Streets. And the first of those is Hill 63. It was a viewing point in the Great War. Up on high, high around here is 63 metres, by the way. And this is a group of 10 that's up on high, just 21 seconds from the front of the race. Jakobs uh, still not made it 11, though. There's Turgis in front of him, looking behind. And the first of the Plugsterits is on the way. Like everything in classics racing, behind in the bigger groups, the battle of position is going to be key. Average speed after four hours, by the way, still at 45 kilometers per hour. That's the fastest predicted time schedule by the organizers. Narrow roads, almost footpath width here. As they move on to Hill 63. And after working so hard, it will be a case of no mechanical incidents, please, for anybody who's got themselves the front of the race. The twists and turns on these gravel tracks are going to be difficult as well. Still work to be done there for Jakobsen. I just wonder if he is going to get on here. Peloton still but well behind, though. And just look at how gingerly they're having to take these corners. And there is the hill, in inverted commas. I know it's certainly not Mont Ventoux, isn't it? Hill 63. But it is uphill to 63 metres above sea level. We'll be going to the highest point in West Flanders, though, soon again. That'll be back to the Kemmel. At 156 metres above sea level. Everybody making sure they stay on their bikes. Breakaway continues to break up. It's Fretin this time. 23 seconds between groups one and two, though, and the original break doing fairly well. It's worth reminding everybody that it's almost 200 kilometers since we started. From Bov and Dujardin and Joyce are on Kent Wevel game debut. Not the same that can be said here for Guillaume von Kersburg, who comes from a good cycling family. Grandfather Benoni Behet was the world champion. And this is that group of ten that with losing the sole rider there. Fretin is down to nine. Interesting that that bought on the podium last year, already up there. And on the attack, he's such a good, versatile rider. They're thick and fast, by the way, these plug streets. All three sectors coming in within five kilometers. After Hill 63, we go to Christmas Truce. It begins at the Christmas Truce Monument. 
Swans Hill 63 has been climbed here first. of course referring to those 63 meters above sea level back onto the tarmac for now increase the lead on the peloton A minute and two seconds from the front to those and here is that peloton Finishing up on Hill 63. It's been a few years since they came into the route and they've really brought their own characters against Wervelkamp. A race that used to take in those climbs just over the border in France. Redesigned, gave a new identity. And of course now in Flanders fields we honour our heroes each and every time we race around here. Bits of moves then. Demarche have already had a drama filled afternoon with Binyam Girmay having a, a small crash earlier on but getting back in. Dako von der Horn had thought about going for the breakaway, then it, in the end it was Mike Turner who made it. And there is Hill 63 in the viewpoint. On to the Christmas truce now. Two groups are coming together on Christmas truce, or not far away. You can just see them in the background. This is Jacobs. He's good at getting himself in breakaways in these sorts of races. He did it last season. I haven't really seen him yet this season, apart from uh, the day to Matt Lofty down under. Movie star, well, are they becoming a classics team? Fourth and fifth yesterday in the, uh, two days ago, I should say, in the Edri Press. As we see the monument there to the Christmas truce. Scene of the uh, famous football match between Allied forces and their enemies. For a day became friends. incredible seeing so many people working so hard to keep the memory and of what must not be forgotten alive off the Christmas true section and Guillaume van Kersburg has a slight gap we're about to enter a forest third and final plug street and this one ends right next to the exit of the underground shelters where up to 2,000 men could stay. So it's given the name the Catacombs. Norwegian champion Rasmus Diller, second in wheel here. And Arnold de Lee shaped rider behind him. This is the memorial to the missing in Plugstert. And the names of 11,447,000 ,000. British soldiers, South African officers, with no known grave, all engraved on that memorial to the missing. And on 
one Belgian rider on the podium in Kienth Guilvo came in five of the last seven editions. And it would have to be some performance here from Guillaume von Kelsbuck if it were to be him. But he's pulling out a bit of a gap now. Five or six seconds. He'll probably have to go a long way back to find his last podium, to be fair. And last year won a, a national race in Courtemarc. As we see the uh, Plug Street 14 to 18 Experience Centre, the Visitor Centre. there from Tourgis, who still has Duchardin up the road. And we're hearing that Tim de Klerk has abandoned the race. That's no surprise, given that the majority of his job was done early on. So the plug streets are done. Group of riders here at around 20 seconds. It looks like Fabio Jakobsen perhaps. Still unable to make it on, wasn't he? And it was the rider who was dropped, Fritin, who's with him. In the meantime, those front two groups came together and now sit behind Guillaume van Kerspel. And following that, the situation is as follows. The peloton now at 1 minute and 18 seconds. Two more passages of the camel still to go. And then that run in. Of course, here every year it's where we remember Antoine de Moitié. Number 192. Retired from the race. Very tragically lost his life. Van Kerspoek looks around and rides for the uh, Bingo Wallonie Bruxelles team nowadays. Been around the block a bit in Belgian teams, of course, he was with Quick Step for quite a while. Into one team, a couple of years at CCC, then Alpes in Phoenix and Bingo. 32 years of age. I wonder if one race on the World Tour. To a stage back in nine years ago now. Fred right there taking a drink for Bahrain Victorious. And Kispa Askren, who's riding here at the front for Sudan Quick Step. The nerves of being on and off those gravel sectors. Maybe time to get the hand up and grab some food. The front, though, there's no let up. Guillaume von Kerspulk is committed. I'd be the right of the centre if he could pull this off. You get the feeling he will be brought back. Try to send Jakobsen across there, didn't quite work, did it? He's going to be brought back and... 
That card has been played. It wasn't an ace, was it? Not on this occasion. They'd like Medellier to do his stuff. Now then, in the meantime, back of the bunch, this is Fanart who needs the car. Just after getting rid of some food. Ready for action, perhaps. Of course, in terms of road racing, second most contested out of any of the races he's ridden. Gets wheel with him six times. As we see Jakobsen now properly brought back. sitting on the back for now. Position for the team is good. And this little group behind Guillaume van Kerspel, there's two riders. And they're very good riders to have up the road in uh, Hoidon, who's making a habit in this particular race and getting himself into big final groups. And Laporte, who did that last year and ended up finishing second to Binyam Girmay. Because there's 61 kilometers still to go. And another 30 kilometers in the hills here. And seven Ks time. We're back into Herveland, back into West Flanders. And heading to the Montebello. A second. Two ascensions of the Montebet. Just to see what the cohesion is going to be like in this group. Once we approach the climbs, the new Kerke here has to be some sort of selection, doesn't it? The gap was listed as about a minute. Looks like it might be quite a bit less now. Let's see. Not again, not again, not again. Florian Vermeersch can't buy a bit of luck. Friday, he was frustrated. And look at that, he's going to have to take a neutral service bike. Another mechanical issue. And Florian Vermeersch understandably showing his frustrations. Oh. <laughs> oh my word, he's done so well just to keep that upright. Oh. He'll be just trying to stay in the bunch and grab another of his own bikes again for now. Of course, he needs the team car to get close for that to happen. He's on the radio now. And this is Kispa Askren riding. The gap has gone down. I thought on that picture it looked like it was reducing. Just above half a minute now. I think Kessel brought back. Is there the correct cohesion here? And there'll probably be another selection made on these hills that are coming up now. Not necessarily from the front, but definitely from the back. We've got 19 riders, as that's it for Fabio Jakobsen. Given his last little bit of energy there to try and pull things along for his team. He's dropped, he's done. And Fabio Jakobsen can clock off now at Kent Wevelkamp. 
it's all down to Tim Medley. Obama are putting their riders together as well. You feel like Armand Demar is feeling good. Stefan Kung at the back of the line. And maybe Kung himself fancies something. She'll have to go on one of the hills and take a small group. And of course, that's the way the race has gone, though, in the last few years. Owen Dool still in the bunch there in the pink helmet. As we go to Nata for Hoidonk at the front of the breakaway. Van Avermaet hanging on after the morning break. Many of the riders who were there are still there. Van Avermaet and Verhoydonk, former teammates, remember, in the CCC days. is not too different at the finish line to what you can see out there on the picture. The whole of Flanders today covered in this fine rain that soaks you through stuff. Getting rather thicker rain in certain areas. It is raining right now. The finish line, the finish straight is wet through. And these smaller crowds for now as well, the ones we're used to seeing at this race. Lots of riders here will know that they are not out the game yet. 24 seconds. And now Kispar Haskarin's working hard to bring this back. He's getting help as well from Kulpama FDG. One part on the left trying to make his way back up. And the wind is battering them. Absolutely battering them. And finally, it looks as though there's going to be a proper bike change for Vermeers. Yesterday, Victor Campanarts was on social media saying that this man deserved good karma. Because when Campanarts had that horrible crash the other day, Florian Vermersch was there holding him, waiting with him, listening to his anger and pain, looking after his mate. He said, surely soon he deserved a bit of luck. And he just keeps having mechanical issue. After a mechanical issue at right the wrong time. Remember a man who his first attempt at Paris Roubaix was right up there. Good numbers for Cole Palmer, isn't that? Four, five, possibly even six of their riders in this group. They also have a man in the breakaway. Here is Aski. They've had a good day so far. because big boss man, Mark Madio's in the car. <laughs> Looking to impress in proximity. So a crowd coming into form as well, isn't he? And the riders in the front group look like they're coming back. Less than 200 metres now. And we're still two and a half k's or so until we get to the Monteberg on next climb, fifth of nine climbs. Oh, not again. Another issue, another change. Tom Screen, Latvian champion. Been a busy day for mechanics, sports directors. Stopping and starting the car. Not the day they want to be getting out either. <laughs> the least they can do if their riders are up in it all day. The rain has started to get a lot harder here at the finish. And the break. Front group of 19 riders is about to be brought back. Now what's going to happen? And the next move's going to go. Is someone going to sneak off the front? Laporte thinks about it. Pearson follows. A few riders in this group make a big effort to get through. 
Now, how's it going to go? Just keep an eye on the left-hand side. Jasper Phillips are being moved up in the blue jerseys. Harper seen to Koenig ride it. And heading in towards our next few climbs, what is going to be the business in terms of attacking and making moves? Anthony Turgis to make the move. Right at the bottom of the Monteberg. And look at Mas Pedersen up there as well. Similar conditions these to the ones he won the World Championships in in Yorkshire. I think Robbie McEwen watching on in Australia for reminding me that. He loves this sort of stuff. Time Kispa Askren's no stranger to it, but he's just committed and given a very, very big turn for his mates. Starting to struggle a little off the back. Turgisto, is he going anywhere? Kind of feel like he needs to take at least a mate or a couple with him. There's a long way to go yet. A reminder Monteberg, Kemmel times two. And in between that, there's Herbenberg, the Bannerberg, and then 30 k's to the finish. We know the wind's blowing not as much as it can do, but it's still out there. It's rainy, it's horrible, and there are already 200 kilometers in the legs. And you can tell because Kiem van Kerspult's going backwards. No surprise after his exertions before. May well be in for a shot at the most aggressive rider prize on the podium at the end of the day. No, there's no shortcuts, mate. Of course, to look at the numbers. But it's much more than numbers in this kind of racing, isn't it? There's very little that's calculated about the classics. Example down the left hand side, pink jersey towards the back, one of the two EF Education easy post riders, losing 10 positions just by taking the wrong line and being forced out into the mud. The ability to hold that position is now what Van Aert makes his way to the front. Elbows left and right. The Magna Sheffield to deal with. Georges with 15 seconds. A very small bunch chasing as we're into the final 50 kilometers in the business end of Gent Wevelchem in Flanders Fields. He's out there, he's got to continue now. Total energy. They've got former winner of this race in Peter Sagan. Sagan's wins coming in 2013, 2016, and then two years later. And back to the Kemmel we go. Belvedere side for the second time. Up to the highest point in West Flanders. And this is the main attraction of Jens Wilkin. Grind your way up these cobbles. And doing that right now is Wout van Aert. He knows that everybody must feel it, follow. It's Christophe Laporte who's following van Aert right now. Yeah. Caleb Ewan who's trying to do that as well. Behind the trying to hang on. But Wout van Aert and Christophe Laporte putting in a two-up team time trial at the moment. That's looking brilliant. Look at Caleb Ewan though. He's got it in the tank today. Pearson's there. Ackerman. 
Trentin, all riders who they would not want to accompany them to the finish. Van Mees is looking better on his new bike, but this is a big move from Wat van Aert, reminiscent of what we saw a couple of years ago. Van Aert victorious on Friday, first win of the season. He's certainly on form now. There's no Pogacar of Fadapur here, but they might have to contend with Ewan. It's been a strong move, but there's no blowing anybody up the water yet. For Marke. There's Medelir. Oh, it's not looking too good for Sudal Quickstep. And over the top they come. Think back to the Trofeo Baraki, the two up event in northern Italy from all those years ago. These guys have done this before, just over a year ago in the E3. There's 52 kilometers of against Wirvelkem, though. It's game on. So twice up the Kemmelberg already. Next, they go up for that final launch pad. The last climb will be the most difficult. That'll be the Kemmelberg to Oswell. Before that, we go back to the Schernberg and the Bannerberg with three climbs to go. <laughs> the site of many battles, Mount Kemmel. And it's going to be the site of more as we go back to summer because the Belgian National Championships will be held in Isichem with ascensions of the Kemmelberg for that Belgian jersey. Uh-oh. Not all roses for Jumbo Visma. This is Tim van Dijken. They've got their men out the front, and they were the men they want, but Tim van Dijken. It's Peter Sagan came past him there. It is not a good farewell tour for Sagan at the moment. It is, though, a committed Wout van Aert and a Christophe Laporte. And Laporte was second in this race last year. And that is already a winner of this race. Been a long time since we had a Frenchman win. Just saying. Philippe Gaumont. 1997. It looks like they will have company, surely. There's some good groups here if they work together. The problem for all these guys is that there's another Jumbo Visma rider involved. Looks like it's for Hoydon. Mohoric wants to go across. Another group, group three there, a handful of seconds as well. Mohoric just trying to break resistance here. And Mears is looking to struggle to hold on. Pedersen already at the front once today. Eight seconds for the Jumbo Visma pairing. One of those hills, the Kemmelberg, that you don't really understand the damage that's been caused until you see these groups sort of trying to get back together on the descent again. It's fascinating. It's sort of like watching groups come over the moon in Herajberga. Only a kilometre or two afterwards, you start to see the real damage that's been caused. The gaps that have opened up. 13 seconds for these two right now. Fnart and Laporte. How many times have we seen this in the last 18 months, the exhibition stuff from Jombo Visma? Now, this would be one of the best if they could carry this home. Go through the town of Kemmel. The 
gap still at 13, grows to 14 as I finish the phrase. Surely there's enough firepower in that group behind to get involved here. It was on Friday, it was Fanart, Pogacar and Van der Poel. And the latter two will not reappear now until the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Fanart racing here and he got his first victory on Friday of the season on the road. Maybe a little more undercooked than previous years. Will that timing prove to be right? At the end of the Flemish Holy Week and the start of the Cobbled Monuments Holy Week. Ronde van Vlaanderen, Paris-Roubaix. Groups all over the road in Gent Wevelkem. Kemmelberg has been ridden twice. And there's a lack of cohesion that is only going to play into Van Aert and Laporte's hands. Now Ackerman sets off. And it's 17 seconds. Both podium finishes, as you can see. Laporte second to Girmay last year. Van Aert, the winner two years ago. Ah, Mohoric not happy. Merlier now in this group. It's also a tale of the two Vermeers. Gianni Vermeers, gravel world champion in there as well, in the blue. this going to settle? Is it going to settle? Every move is being marked. Nata for Hoidonk has a big job to do, just like he did in the last couple of years for two different leaders, both of whom are in the front now. And those two are increasing their lead. It's becoming serious. There's 30 seconds. Need some sort of cohesion behind. A long way to go. There's still a chance to bring these two back, despite the big names, despite the almost invincibility of an air they're carrying around this season. Trek you would think would commit because they've got Pearson here, but what are the numbers like? There's more than one rider. The conversations will start. Will there be anybody left from Sudar Quickstep to help Tim Merlier? 35 seconds now. Heading to the Schippenberg, which is approaching right now. In just over 10 kilometers, the hills will cease. And it will be the flat run in all the way to Wevelchem. Oliver Nassen there. Good to see him back in form. He was in a jovial mood and good conversation in the False Platt podcast this week. Talking about his origins as a bike courier and the dream of turning professional. These two have been living the dream for quite a while, certainly the man at the back there. Wout van Aert, having won for the 40th time on the road on Friday in the Edri Saxo Classic, or Harald Becker as we call it. First road victory of the season. And if you look back last year, every single one of the victories on the road was top-level world tour. No messing about. Including three stages at the Tour de France. Right. 
But it's an important race, though, in the career of Wout van Aert. It's the first proper Belgian cobbled classic he won. A couple of years ago, since he's been on to win the Omlop at Duisplad and two times in Adelbeke. Gap now at 46 seconds. Bochrena helping the chase. Who are they chasing for? Mohoric is their main man, but first they've got to bring it back, I guess, and then think this is uh, Gianni Vermeer. I'm sure he'll be trying to defend his gravel world title in Italy at the end of the year. There's a lot of bike riding to be done before that. It's climbing still, well, nigh on a minute now. Christophe Laporte, the Frenchman here, and Wat van Aert behind the Belgian. Both riding for the Dutch team, Jombo Fisma. Seventeen wins already for Jombo Fisma this year, and this is where the move went. On the horrible cobbles of the Kemmel, Torgis overtaken. Ewan looked like he might be about to follow. But Fanart and Laporte doing the job. Still there with three climbs to go. Make that two now on the other side here of the Scherpenberg. Next towards the Panneberg, followed very quickly by the Kemmel, but this time from Oswer. And that's the most difficult side. Still, the numbers are all right, aren't they? For number Fishman, Olaf Koy sits there too in that yellow jersey. They have a stacked team. Just imagine it didn't work out, and Koy's still there. That man won a Paris Nice sprint the other week against some of the fastest sprinters in the world. They have talent, they have numbers. There's talent in the other teams. Maybe not quite the same numbers. Stander Wolof is in there alongside Oliver Nasser. Tim Medlier. Should have a quick step. The team that always used to have the numbers. Too many riders to work for Medlier here. Hearing a crash. Hearing of a crash involving a rider for EF Education. Easy post at the back. Sure, which rider was it? Was called out in the race radio. Cries have come on, Walt. Fifty-one seconds on our way to the Bannerberg for the second and final time. It's the penultimate climb of the day. Short but strenuous. The famous windmill, the Listermolen. And then over to the Kemmel. The last launch pad for riders who would need a ride away from the sprinters in order to take the win. I'll tell you that several riders won't be launching themselves to victory. There's a couple of just crossed the line here in Weevil and looking for the team buses. That sort of day. If you can't find any dry, go and find it quickly. That race. Get on that bus. Banneberg then. Maximum gradient of 11% comes in the middle, and then you've got the hard section towards the top, twisting and turning. 
That's the win look. And it's only containment that's going on here behind at the moment. The gap is not actually coming down. still there with Ackerman, the rider from Bora. Of course, we've seen Ewan riding really well for Lotto Destiny. This race is not done yet. John Dienkorp still there. coming up in this area towards the end of the year. It's Van Aert and Laporte on the Bannerberg. They'll swing right again in a moment and go up past the windmill. They'll twist and turn away. They're dancing away from the rest of the bunch at the minute. Teammates will be trying to stick together. For now, it threatens to be a Jumbo Visma exhibition. And the gap grows. 59 seconds, it's the biggest it's been. As Turner takes it up, Sheffield is alongside him. Advise is still in this group as well. Good finisher for Ineos Grenadiers. Remember, early on in the day, Filippo Ganna and Michal Kwiatkowski both crashed out of the race. That's what's left of the main peloton. A minute and two seconds behind now, heading up to the final slopes of the Barnabé. Eighth of nine climbs in this Kenneth Wirvel came in Flanders Fields 2023. It's a decent effort, this from those at the front of the bunch, but it is not doing anything at the minute to bring back the two in the front. And it will need full commitment over the 30 remaining kilometers to do that. Feels though now the gap is growing. Over the top they go, the windmill continues to turn almost ferociously as the wind gets up again. But it's about one final hill now and the run into town. The Panabetic is done and we go back to the Kemmel for the final launch pad for riders who need to ride away from the sprinters in order to take the win. The problem for those behind is two sprinters have ridden away already. Wat van Aert and Christophe Laporte with a minute of a gap heading into the final climb of the day. After that, 30 kilometers to the finish. Jumbo Visma, Trek, Segafredo, the two teams with the most consistency in the last five editions. Jumbo Visma, last two years, a first and a second. Hesitation, though, here. This group getting smaller after that climb. Still two Jumbo Visma riders waiting. They've got a plan A out in front and a plan B back there with Olaf Koi and Nata for Hoidon.
one minute, one second. The biggest gap that Wout van Aert and Christophe Laporte have had. We talked about van Aert's 40 career wins, while well, Laporte, since he's moved particularly to Jumbo Visma, has been building his own palmares. Third this year in the Omlop at Nusplad, where van Aert was the winner, but 26 victories in total, including a brilliant five last season when he moved to Jumbo Visma. And of course, the leader's jersey at Paris, plus that tour stage win. It was quite the dream year. The only previous victory in Flanders came in a time trial in Borne in the Tour of Belgium. He's previously won victories over in Wallonia, the other side of Belgium. The locker and we're heading out to the camel I've been zigzagging across these small farm roads in West Flanders all day and now doing it with Excellent efficiency, despite all that the wind and rain has thrown at them. And look at this, this is clever for Fahoynok, just sitting there, second wheel, getting in the way a little bit. Turner will finish his turn, and there'll be nobody to come through. Fahoynok <laughs> asking the television motorbike to clear off a little. That's the usual practice in these circumstances, of course. I'll buy that little bit of drafting. Last person comes across to have a word with Verhoida. And at the back of this group, oh, ouch. I feel it just watching them. Yes, Pasterva trying to get back in. Pierre Gautra riding his first against Wevelgem is there. Came into the team. And Caleb Ewan off the back just before the foot of the Kemmelberg for the final time. Not what he needs. And now at almost 230 kilometres in, the legs can just give up. Perfon Leberger, by the way, is the other rider from Sudal Quick Step. Who's there to try and help Tim Medley? So the road starts to rise. The hill and the forest looking ominous. Has done for centuries. The site of a Celtic Empire. Bloody battles in the war. Thankfully now, the only battles we get are these here on the bike. And it has been quite the battle so far from start to finish today. The Kemmelberg awaits the final climb of Gint Wevelkem in Flanders Fields. And it's two brothers in arms from Jumbo Visma who are going to take it on. Wad van Aert and Christophe Laporte. On the day we come to honour our heroes, are climbing the hardest, most heroic side of the Kemmelberg to try and take a big victory. Only four riders have ever won the Edri Press and Gint Wevelkem together in the same season. Wout van Aert trying to become the fifth. He is with a teammate. Surely he'll be trying to keep him with him for now. But up to 21% near the top. These cobbles are hard enough on a dry day. Today it's been wet and windy and miserable. They're covered in bits of mud. They're slippy. The stones are horrible. Laporte is trying to hang on. His teammate Fanart is grinding up. And the gap's over a minute now. Listen to the roar for the Belgian fans. Bike racing at its best. And the feverish Flemish fans. Well, there's nothing like them. Wout van Aert at the top, he's done the business. 
He'll have his mate with him. Christophe Laporte has suffered alongside him. And now it's this dangerous descent. A minute further back, it's time to go. Has anybody got what it takes to bring these two back? But they hit it at a different intensity. Van Aert looked on another level there. Meantime, problem at the back for one of the riders from Bora Hanskro. They're swinging left and right. Miguel Biel, though, through the centre. There's a teammate in Ackerman just behind him. Mars Pearson trying to stay in the game, and Olaf Coy making sure he stays there in case the two in front are brought back. Climbing up the camel. The damage has been done there. The hurt is over for these guys. They need to get organized in the chase if they want to bring out the two in front. There's still some big name riders in there. Seneschal's also there for Medley. They fly down this descent. And Mount Kemmel can return to peace and quiet for another year. They come from everywhere to watch this. Even the Mexican sombrero there. I hope he brought the thermals with him. So then, 33 kilometers. Riding against the clock, really. Christophe Laporte, Wad van Aert. What have you got? The rain's pouring. It's miserable conditions for bike riding. They're on their way to Wevelkim. They need to hold their nerve and keep their power. Have they fueled what's left in the legs? All sorts of things to be brought back into the equation. But it is the Best showing, maybe, since the Trofeo Baraki stopped existing. Of this two-up stuff going all the way to the line. The Trofeo Baraki was an old event in northern Italy where I find love the event was a two-up time trial. Now then, Mohoric, as always, wants to be aggressive. He has uh, Mirs with him. Oh, is there enough bodies? Enough teammates to do chasing for riders who want to win here. That can be part of the problem and could play into the hands of those in front. Okay, we've got a big group here and three or four teammates for a couple of big sprinters, then it's a different game, isn't it? With 30 Ks to go. Mohoric will know he can't do it all himself. He's got to drag a decent group with him here, and they've got to share the workout. They keep attacking each other. Surely it's going to play into the hands of Wout van Aert and Christophe Laporte. Such a small group. Remember, we had that group of riders who were distanced just before the bottom of the camel that also changed the complexity and composition of things and less complex in the fact that there weren't enough numbers to add together for the chase the conditions well improved them for those out in front and here they are not quite turning our attention yet as to who's going to win from these two who might be allowed to win There's been no French winner at this race for over a quarter of a century. This is Gourmand in 97. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Hart was previously second last year. Up there in this race too in his coffee days. Fred right time. Still never won a race, has he? He's been so close so many times. Now then, Tim Medlir. Off he goes. But again, he needs someone with him. Problem is, do you want to work with Tim Medley? There's all sorts of plots and subplots that get added into the equation here. And that will make it easier for the two out front as long as they still have enough gas in the tank. Medley, fast man. But you can understand trying to get going, because unless there's organization, doesn't happen. They're even fighting this group behind us. Hands up. There's gestures across the road. This is what often happens in this race at this point. Nils Pollock getting angry with somebody there. These two, though, know what the plan is. They're committed. They have been for a while. 50 kilometers from the finish when they went. Second ascension of the Kemmelberg. Now, bigger numbers, but they have to get organised quickly. The gap is now a minute and 18 seconds. Shakes of heads, looks around. Unless they work and work together now, this is going to be done. This is the American monument, the memorial erected in 1929 in Kemmel commemorates the 27th and 30th American divisions that were deployed in the region of Ypres and the Lais between the 18th of August and the 4th of September 1918. These salvation battles that were fought, they were so hard to read each time, approximately 1,300 casualties in the 27th division, 800 victims in the 30th division. Most of them buried in that American cemetery just up the road near Warachem, where we will be on Wednesday at Duarte of Landra. World War I, the Great War, was the first foreign war in the history of the United States of America. Over a kilometre of a gap now for the terrible twosome. And unless there's some big change, this is done. Bert von Leberger back to save the day, maybe. What has he got? He has Miguel Biao with him. Magnus Sheffield there, but look at that third wheel. Nata for Hoydonk, he's done this job before in this race, just like this. Spoiling waiting. This is Brett von Moore in the meantime. Had a good start to the season anyway, I've lost her destiny. You can say that they're on their way back with a new generation. Because they can't be promoted to World Tour again. But there's no issues with any World Tour teams. Another three years, say three-year promotion relegation cycle, which I know that a few of you will find strange. Can make sure each and every year that they finish as the best team or one of the best teams in the second division and get the automatic invites to the top races. So they'll be racing most of those top races. 
but they've already declined an invite to race in the Giro d'Italia this year to concentrate on getting results with that smaller, younger squad. Frédéric Frison now, yep. Of course, they did have Keller Buren in a little earlier on. Drop just before the camel duck. Florian Vermeers and Prim Vermoer are the other two riders here. Gap at 1 minute 25. Second is ticked back off, but the kilometres tick off as well. 26 to go. doing the majority of the way. Several twists and turns, but mainly a straightish run in. And you can see, could be just the fourth French rider to win Kit Wilkin, maybe. Jacques Anquetil, Bernard Hinault, and Gaumont, the last winner. In 97. And in uh, Vormerzele, enclosure number three, the boy who modelled for Peter Pan was buried. The character Peter Pan, developed by J.M. Barry, was inspired by his adopted son, George Llewellyn Davis, who belonged to the sixth. King's Royal Rifle Corps. He was slain on the 15th of March, 1915, near Sinterloy, a hamlet of Fort Marcella. The horrors of those days. Pardon nobody. Bio is coming through and riding. Of course, for Hoidonk isn't going to do that. Yeah. Oliver Nasa up there. 1 minute 31. Now, what stage do people in this group start to think about getting and fighting for that last place on the podium? Because this is still going away from them. Well, they'll tick off the towns. Fanart in particular will know them. And each time they do, a kilometre ticks off. Seconds are added to the gap. And it's only going one way, which is out. The victory is going here to Jumbo Visma. It would take a huge turnaround. A massive turn up for the books for things to change. We come into town, the place where it all started at the start of the day. Ypres, the new home of the start of Kent Wilkin. The men in gate up ahead. A 
and under the memorial to the missing. It's been an afternoon with a heroic performance from Jombo Visma. We take a moment here to remember real heroes. And the monument to the missing. And if you'd like to come and ride on these roads, make sure you visit to Ypres. All of the West Hook for you to explore. Ypres, of course, as we know it in the English language. And in the French, Ypres in the local Flemish. There's the cloth hall, the main grand place as well as you can see, Belfry, buildings built in the 13th century, and the cloth hall because they used to store cloth there. These buildings almost completely destroyed back in the Great War. at almost two minutes here. Again, I don't wish to be a killjoy, but this is gone. Jumbo Visma must be dreaming here of a one, two, three, because Olaf Koy might just be one of the fastest men in this group. That would set off some serious soul searching for the rest, wouldn't it? What's left of the peloton under the men and gate? and heading back towards Weevilkem. Almost five and a half hours since they started under this old, poignant structure. It's been a wet day out there. A hard day. Nothing, though, compared to the hardships. So many people were forced to endure here over a century ago. Almost two minutes here. What for now? Christophe Laporte. The romantic in you will say it's got to be Laporte's turn. Well, get greedy, who knows? That's the decision to be made at the front. They're both deserving. We know that for now, I think, was the strongest in the race. It was the strongest. Well, the cleverest, I think, on Friday. Bogacar and Van der Poel look stronger than him on the climbs. Showing a slightly different way of racing in Adelbecker. The one that Van Aert really wants to win comes next Sunday. He really has this one on his palmares. Van Aert, though, is the sort of rider who could come and win quite a few against Wevel Kemp's. The record is held by Sagan, Merckx, Van Looy, Cipollini, Bona and Van Enarmer, all with three wins each. A group of riders on two. And one of them sat in one of the team cars today. He's not going to be very happy in Tom Stales. This is the Menin Road South Military Cemetery. Medim Road, troops travel to the front. Current register here, there's uh, 1,658 soldiers buried here, 120 of which could not be identified.
Johnny Van Meers here at the back as the gap creeps over two minutes. Mentioned that Tom Stills wouldn't be happy because it's not worked out yet again for Sudal Quickstep. You have to start tracing back a little further to see when they last won a Flemish cobbled race. Of course, they won the Nukura Cursa this year, one of the smaller ones. That's their only thing to show so far, really, for the classic season. They're doing well in stage racing, of course. There's another stage win today. Contra Remco Evenepoel. That was Jumbo Visma who took the overall there with Primoz Roglic. Thirteen riders about to get back onto that first peloton. Are oh, they enough reinforcements to do something very special? A minute, it's difficult to see. There's certainly more cohesion here. That bias pulls through. This is the sort of cohesion that you needed quite a while ago. This, though, is definitely Van Aert. Gap started to creep down for the first time. So they have come in runs these wins in Weevilkem. You see nine riders previous have won two and three years, so wouldn't be anything out of the ordinary for Wout van Aert to do that. Will it be him though? Will it be Christophe Laporte? And how's Olaf Koy feeling back here? Again, he's getting a nice free ride here to be ready to maybe sprint for the third place. As Jasper Phillips who wants to give himself that chance, but he's really, really giving a lot, isn't he? Even if he makes it here, is there going to be anything left for a sprint? Of course, it's the motivation there for that sprint for third. Looks as though he's struggling, hasn't he? And there were 13 riders chasing on. He's certainly losing contact now with that group. Van Leeberger, of course, he has gone the other way. He's definitely been dropped. Oh, it's hard out there, and that's the last we're going to see of Jasper Phillips here today. Such a hard race with the distance and the weather, this. Ackerman's looked in better form, hasn't he, the last few weeks? A poor first year. When he was there at UA last year. Feel a little bit for Tim Medlier. He's gone to so that'll quick step, but he doesn't quite have the same support yet that riders have done previously. Certainly much more impetus in that group now, but are they going to run out of time? Van Meers here at the back. What a great day really for Alpes into Koenig. Because they had a poor start to the season by their recent top standards last World Tour team to pick up a win. Mathieu van der Poel's monument success changed all that. 15 Ks to go for Christophe Laporte and Wout van Aert. Have they still got it in the legs? Or is something special going to happen behind? Still looks like a big ass for those behind, doesn't it? Now in Zillebecker, this is the Hoge Krater Cemetery. Again on the Menem Road. Along the 
hillside of Torga. Right opposite the museum of the same name. There was heavy fighting around here in the Great War. Because the elevation was quite strategically interesting to both sides. So on the 19th of July 1915, a mine charge of over 2,000 kilos was detonated. A dozen men of the 4th Middlesex were buried alive under the debris. Of course, the thousands and thousands of other graves that joined them. Watch this race every year, and I'll repeat it does serve as a hugely sobering reminder. It's no wonder that to the culture of people in this West Flemish region that this is such an important part of their daily lives, keeping that memory alive. We are confronted with the sheer vast scale of it on a daily basis. Ten seconds then have gone off the gap. But there's only 13 kilometres remaining. Some hardy, brave souls out there to cheer on. The brilliant Wat van Aert, the hero from Herentals. Is it going to be a sidekick who's going to take it today, though? Neutral observers would like that. It was last year at the Edri Press. Fanat rolled across just in front of his teammate Laporte. A year and a day on from that. Here we are. Florian Vermeersch is looking for that final spot. He's had a good race today again. He's so strong at the minute, isn't he? So strong. Just lacking that bit of luck. Advise has ridden a good race and John Dig and Cole. Best shape we've seen him in for a little while. Just not quite enough is there of impetus. It just breaks up every time there's a couple of strong turns. And the gap grows out again to two minutes now. And this is where they will begin to think about that third place. Just over 10 kilometers in from the finishing wheel, Kim. right in this group, alongside Vermeer's latest group to be dropped off. The big group two. The riders are given their best. Racing there, he'd be stopping for a photo in front of all those things. Case to go. Has seemed like a foregone conclusion for a while. The numbers now are definitely in the favour. The mathematics, and the equations have all paid off. These two will start to realise that Hint Wevelkem in Flanders Fields is going again to Jumbo Visma two years after they'd taken it behind. 
Well, they all start to think of third. Matteo Trentin tries to sneak away. Sefon Marke will try and join him. And this is where the most interesting racing could be hit, hand, handled right now. That's the field of tractors they come. Does he have it to go all alone? No. Nine and a half case to go for the front two. Cold, wet day out. They're both going to be on the podium. In what order? has been on the podium in his last two races. San Remo with that awkward sofa photograph. He was pleased to know that there was no sofa on the Friday afternoon at the Edri Press. He said it was the nicest podium he'd been on for a while because he was in the centre of it. He was set in good humour. It's not his best friend, Mathieu Fonopoul, but there's a healthy respect between the two. Taking his defeat with good grace, too. Now, Fodderpool will come back for next Sunday. Tadej Pogacar will as well. We're heading to Wevelheim here. We'll also head to Wadaheim on Wednesday for Dwarz do Vlandre. Now they'll move off the front. Rare opportunity for... Mikkel Biel to try and get up there. Normally a workhorse. And here he is, being chased by Nils Pollitt. But it's attack, followed by slowing up, followed by attack. In the meantime... <laughs> these are the conversations at the front. Another few hundred metres ticked by seven and three quarter kilometres to the line. Christophe Laporte only on his fifth race day of the season, believe it or not. Hasn't raced a stage race yet. Top, top form. Of course, these teams, their altitude camps, all sorts going on. They're never unfit, these guys, anymore. There's no working your way back in in training races, as they used to call them. But in four starts, the worst has been just outside the top 20 in Harald Beck at the weekend. Now Vermeers, Florian Vermeers. Frison sits back and watches at the back of the bunch. Vermeers, who was second in Paris Roubaix two years ago. Struggled to finish his last couple of classics. He's been good here. Of course, incidents, accidents, caring for stricken teammates have contributed to those. Non finishes. The crowd here at the finish line, by the way, are getting excited because they know that Wart van Aert is going to be on the podium. And they're even cheering the police motorbikes as they come across one by one in the convoy. People start to arrive in Wevelgem. And this group now slowing behind and thinking about how they will try to take that third spot on the podium definitely the gap is well over two minutes now these two can almost have a conversation at the same time now here we go Pollitt makes his move being followed by Olaf Koy Jumbo Visma will be dreaming of the one two three
And Coy is reacting really well. Breakthrough moment for him, remember, the man in the yellow there at Paris-Nice. Big, big stage win for him there. Now an attack on the right hand side at the top. One of the riders from Ineos Grenadiers, it's Jonathan Narvaez. Knows Belgium, used to ride for a Belgium team in quick step. Wants Tip to be a man for these races and not really fulfilled his promise. Oh, now a medal lead is down. In fact, it's one of the riders from Bahrain, pardon me. Medley just behind, same colour helmet. Well, that was not good. Just slipping and sliding out. Might well have been Mohoric here. And the lamp post as well. Thankfully, he was up. That's <laughs> not a comfortable watch. We've seen plenty of those today. Matej Mohoric led us to go down. Medlier, well, thankfully for the Belgian fans, is here and safe. Latest move brought back. Where's the next going to come from? Lombo Visma will be getting greedy here. This could be something like they saw in Paris-Nice. Now, is just hanging on. About Paris-Nice last year when they were 1-2-3 on the opening stage. Nata for Hoyland doing his best to bring back Narvaez. He does that well. Plenty of reaction. Now, Coy's at the back of the group here. Just in danger of being cut off. That's where the real racing's happen. With these two. They're going to cross the line in some sort of order between them. But they are going to cross the line first. They're now less than four kilometres to the finish in Wevelkamp. Ouch. Not been for the lack of trying today for Matej Mohoric. And legs and luck moments haven't been on his side. And well, going down on that roundabout there, that's race over. He will finish, but not near the podium as he was hoping. Miguel Biel is the latest to go. Second time he's tried to get out in front. Pollock will try and chase. Of course, there's a whole host of fast men in here waiting with 5Ks to go for this group for a sprint. But there's riders who know that they have to attack to do something if they want that moment on the podium. Almost two kilometres further up the road, Wat van Aert and Christophe Laporte still right away. How good Biel is against the clock. He's turned into a tremendous domestique, hasn't he? Brilliant in the mountains last year for Tadej Pogacar, even though his leader wasn't able to turn things around at the Tour de France. Move by move, they see the chances and try and take it. Biel has a bit of a gap here now, being chased again. Lotto Destiny, I think up that podium spot. Biel will take some bringing back though, and again, again. Yombo Visma, time for them to start getting involved. You imagine that this would be for Hoidon, but we'll wait to see the conversations as to what's going to happen. Maybe even talking about how they'll celebrate. Lot of destinies, Frederick Frison this time in the chase. Except for Marke, is it who's with him or is that another rider from Israel? Except for Marke. 
And they're almost now on the wheel of Nigel Biel. Oh, from Marke to Meme has been looking good at the start of the year. He would be a really popular one to be up there. Frederick Frison, a workhorse down the years. How do you mean he can will be something special, but there's still quite a way to go for this group. Well, from Marke will rate his sprint chances in this group. There's Laporte and Wat van Aert shoot the breeze. They've ridden through the breeze, the wind and the rain today. They're just over a kilometre away from the finish now. And Gint Wevelkin in Flanders Fields is going to be won by two brothers in arms. Flamme Rouge for the Jumbo Visma pairing of Wat van Aert, a winner two years ago. Christophe Laporte second last year. They go past the Flamme Rouge, past their fan club. And now just 1,000 metres separate Jumbo Visma from what will be a 19th victory of the season, but yet another Flemish cobbled classic. Wart van Aert won the Omlop at Nieuwsblad. A day later, it was Thies Benoot who took Kurne Brussel Kurne. And two days prior to this race, in Harlbeke, it was Wart van Aert who took the victory. Building on all of that success, started by Dylan van Baale in the Omlop at Nieuwsblad. Time to congratulate each other. Here they go again. From Fumbala to Benoit to Van Aert. Is this time going to be for Laporte? They can start to celebrate. There's two minutes of free row behind them. With 50 kilometers to go, this pair attacked. For the last 50 kilometers, they stayed out in front as if we were turning back time to the old Trofeo Baraki two-up time trial. A handshake, a congratulation, and they're going to come across the line. Kim Twivelkim in Flanders Fields is won by Jumbo Visma, is won by the Brothers in Arms, and Christophe Laporte is the first French winner of Kim Twivelkim in over a quarter of a century. Sensational stuff. Utterly dominant yet again. The team of the moment in all disciplines. And a week away from the Ronde. What a fight we have on our hands. Fanat won the dress rehearsal two days ago. He'll be hoping it'll be all right on the night next Sunday. And now Laporte has his own cobbled classic victory. A 1-2 on the podium. Who's going to join them up there? Because Michael Biel, Frederick Frison, and Stefan Marke are at the front. They have 850 metres to rise. This now looks like it could be Mars Pilsen. It's certainly a Trek Segafredo rider in the chase. Biel continues to pull at the front. Past the finish line, the congratulations continue. All oh, being ushered into the correct place. As Frison looks around and it is Pedersen in the distance. Biel will start to try and have a go here. Pedersen comes, we know that he is so quick, but how much has he given? Is there anything left in the tank to win the sprint here? We know he's good after a hard day. Will he shock them and launch it first? Is Pedersen in the red and white for Marke in the blue? It's been a while since he's been on the podium of one of these things, and here we go. Sprint for third is launched, and getting right in front of him, Marke, it's Pedersen. He's strong, he's stable, he's hanging it. Is he going to hack the pace, though? Because here comes Sepp von Marke around him. Sepp von Marke to the line, he's going to be cheered on all the way. Look at that, welcome back, Sepp von Marke. That is a hugely popular podium place. It's Christophe Laporte, Wout van Aert, Sepp van Marke. That's a tremendous result from, Mon from Marke. He is back in the classics. But on the day, it's all about Jumbo Visma. Omlop bit Newsplar with Dilla van Baale.
Kuhn and Brussel Kurna with Tish Benot. Harold Becker won by Walt van Aert. And finally, for the first time since 1997, a Frenchman wins against Wevelkem. That man is Christophe Laporte. One by one, they will come over. A race ridden in horrible weather from start to finish. We only really had the one big move and there was no answer, no response to it. But it's been a long, long, nasty day. Bit by bit, the energy's been taken from these guys. They all deserve every bit of plaudits that's thrown at them, the way they've ridden and finished. A really hard day out on the bike. Sadal quick step with Seneschal and von Leerberger there. He'll be disappointed again in Flanders. He'll be hoping for redemption in a week's time at the big one. But off goes Laporte to get ready. We'll be hearing from him in just a moment. Well done. Well done indeed. Hey, Foster. Fanart looked the strongest, didn't he? But coming across together, Jombo Visma with a one-two. I'll be calling them Jombo Mappa if they carry on with this stuff. Tremendous stuff. And an image that'll be hung up on the team's office wall, I'm sure. The role reversal from Harold Baker last year. A one-two, but in a different order. This time it's Laporte who takes the honours. What a sight. And this was that third place that will be a sight for sore eyes for Flemish fans. At the age of 34, the man from Kortrijk, who came on the scene in 2012 by beating Tom Bonen to the Omlop at Nusblad, set for market. And beating Mars Pedersen in the sprint. Pedersen who'd give everything to come across. It's a big fourth place to Frederick Frison as well. Flemish cycling might not have won the day. There's some popular results in the top five, though. And it's cheered as if it was a win. That's a big result for a man who spent time in the wilderness. And his third time on the podium here. Twice second before. Now with a third place. And a big result for Israel Premier Tech. Christophe Laporte wins Gent Wevelkem in Flanders Fields. He beats his teammate Wout van Aert, who he rode to the finish with, with Sepp van Marke coming in third, Frederick Frieson fourth, Mars Pedersen fifth, then it's Pierre Renard, Coy for Popple and McClay. Three in the top eight for Jumbo Fisma. Yet another one, too. And Christophe Laporte is the first French winner of this race in 26 long years. The rain continues to fall in Flanders. It's been that sort of day. It's been a long day as well. 
thanks to all of you stuck with us and stuck with me this afternoon. Uh, plenty more racing coming from Flanders Classics over the next particularly 10 days or so. Canada this year averting to type. Paris-Roubaix will come a week after the Ronde of Flanders. So on Wednesday we'll go to Wadehem for the Ronde of Flanders. Then to Aldenarde for the Ronde. Following that, we'll have the Skelde Presse in Skoten, just outside of Antwerp. And after Roubaix, we'll be back with Brabant Sapel to round out the Flemish cobbled classic season. Well, this is how the day went. A good 14 riders up the road, a gap of three and a half minutes and a very good group, including Craig van Avermaet. In the Muda, not too much happened, really. The wind blowing, but not quite strong enough. What did happen, though, were crashes. Filippo Gann had already crashed out by the time that Michal Kwiatkowski went down and into an ambulance. Two down and injured for Ineos Grenadiers. Jakobs repeating in the breakaway in Kent Wevelchem. Same with Yellow Ice. And then Binyam Girmay, defending champion, crashed. He was OK to carry on. He found himself at the front of the bunch again, but who knows how much energy had been expended. To the Kemmelberg we came, the famous cobbles. And at this stage, it was riders who were slipping and sliding out the back. The first small group managed to break off over the top. Fanart let a couple of his teammates go into that group. And one of them being Christophe Laporte. The other, of course, was Nata Verhoydonk. But there'll be plenty of changes. As the groups found themselves all over the road with each passage of cobbles. There was yet more bad luck for Florian Vermeers, who's had quite the week. And Guillaume von Kersburg would find himself reeled in after an adventure out there on the Plug Streets. By the time we came up to the second passage of the Kemmel, it was time for action. Fanart going away with Laporte. 50 kilometers to go when they got the gap. And the gap they held on for those last 50 Ks. And instead of bringing it down, the gap just kept getting wider. There were half-hearted attempts, but there's never any real organisation behind. Okay, under the men in gate alone, where they'd started with 168 riders earlier in the day. And it was never in doubt, really. There were conversations. But there was a picture on the line, a one-two, and brothers in arms crossing the line as Laporte wins. And Fanart finishes second. The end of a rainy day in Wevelgem and across the whole of West Flanders. It's a big victory for the team from over the border in the Netherlands. Well, Menem was a German canton with German military field hospitals and ceremony cemeteries pardon me, during the war. And at the end of the war, there were approximately 6,400 graves. After the war, the German military graves were brought together to 184 cemeteries. And in 1952, the Belgian and German governments decided to bring them together at four locations in West Flanders. Vladslo, Horgleder, Menen and Landmark. And now a staggering nearly 48,000 German soldiers 
now lie buried at this cemetery. Well, the wind's blown across the route all day. Those flags haven't quite been ripped off as in previous editions, but it was enough to contribute. When everybody opened the curtains this morning, they knew they were in for a hard day. All they had to do was glance down at the start list as well and see Jombo Visma, with that team consisting of Van Aert, Laporte, Coy, Roos and Van Deke, Van Emden and Van Hoydonk. In the end, Laporte and Van Aert, the top two with another top eight finish for Coy. What a finish, and what an image. In all truth, though, the damage was done with 50 k's to go. Another jumbo victory for Jumbo Visma. All smiles. And the man on the left will be smiling if he takes the big one next Sunday. Up until now, the Ronde of Lander for him, the one that got away. Photo finished there just in case you needed it. And the team celebrations that we're becoming quite accustomed to now. That was lift off well before we got to the Wevelgem Airport, wasn't it? For Jumbo Visma, Wout van Aert and Christophe Laporte. And let's go and hear from Christophe Laporte speaking to Renard Schotter. Christophe Laporte, felicitations. Quatre Congratulations. What does it feel like to win Gent Wevelkamp? And when did you take the decision? About 10 kilometers to go. Well, asked me if I wanted to win. And I knew the, what the response was going to be. So it's incredible. What we've done all together. You know, we did it in three. I thought that would only come once in a career, but we've done it again. It, what was stronger than me today, and well, um, it's uh, thanks to him that won today. What does it mean for you? It's a dream. A dream since I was a kid to win uh, classics in a stage of the Tour de France. Il me manquait une classique l'année dernière, j'ai fait deux fois deuxième aujourd'hui et je suis premier. Et je suis très fier, je pense à ma famille, ma femme, mes deux petits garçons et mes petits garçons. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on fait beaucoup de sacrifices pour en arriver là et je suis très heureux. Et voilà, on well, there were still 50 kilometers to go then, so we wanted as a plan to go up that second ascension and be strong there, and we did it. And there was only two of us there, and we gave everything to the line. I really, really suffered on the wheel there. I wanted to give as much as I could. It was 50 kilometers all the way, and and uh, Walt was absolutely brilliant today. He's a fantastic champion. And uh, I'm delighted to do things like that with him. 
Great to hear there from Christophe Laporte there, who is the winner today. Kintwevel again taken by Jumbo Visma and by a Frenchman for the first time since 1997. And a gracious interview. Explaining that he thought his teammate was stronger today. I think we all saw that on the Kemmel bed, both times up. But also asking if he'd wanted to win today. Of course, now that Fanart has this race on his own palmares, able to do that. And Laporte explaining that. It's very good to know that he has landed a big one now. So just waiting for the podium ceremony. Try and bring you a little bit more reaction as well. Maybe from the Flemish side. Second and third placings and of course that'll be a really popular one for Sepp van Marke. Well, this is Weevil him from the app. A bit beyond the rest of Classics Country, if you like, with Harold Baker, Kortrijk and Oudenaarde. Kurna as well, a bit further up towards uh, Kent on the motorway. Slightly ever further back towards France here. And this is the square where the festivities in a minute will take place. As you brave the weather today, are packed in there. And this time a year ago, you couldn't move in there with the good weather and big celebrations for Biniam Girmay. There's a healthy following awaiting the heroes and their moment on the podium.
Okay, time to go and hear from uh, Wad van Aert, who is speaking to Renat. Wad van Aert, place. many congratulations. That is a terrific one-two. When was the decision taken? Uh, we just rode uh, full on until uh, I think the last 10, 8K maybe uh, to the finish. Then, uh, then we were quite sure we we had a victory uh, for us and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I won uh, on Friday, and uh, my eyes are, of course, on, on the, the races uh, who are coming. Christophe had also a difficult start of the of the season with the uh, with the sickness, and um, he's such a such a team player that it was an easy decision. Final question: It looked easy to give the victory away, but it's not easy to win a race like this. No, it's incredible. Uh, only a few days ago, we, we thought about uh, a repress of uh, 2022, and we, we said to each other, we, we should realize this is probably never going to happen again. And uh, yeah, only a few days later, we, we do the exactly the same thing. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to believe that it's possible on, the, on this high level. But uh, I think it's all hard work coming together, and um, such a nice feeling to do this together. Congratulations. Thank you, Bot van Aert. Echoing the sentiments there from his teammates, the winner, Christophe Laporte. And yes, I thought back to the Edri Press last year. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a nicer server to sit on now, although uh, I'm not sure they've upgraded the sides too much since maybe they bought it off the Italian organisers from San Remo. I'm sure they'll find a spot for Sepp von Marke, though, don't you worry. Here is Seppel Marke. He's commenting on the sofa, saying it's the famous one. And it's less an awkward picture, isn't it, this week? So, my would be scantic. Climb another camera. And uh, young for Marke. Going to go onto the podium as well. Do you have it? You do? Il a dit une minute. Une minute, guys. Une minute trente. And they're talking about how the gap went out there. I think you could hear it on the radio. Just asking how many came in. 25, you said. You're overestimating things there a little bit. Sep. Yeah, and while Fanart just explained that, yep, they could go full gas those two at the front, and well behind they were playing the games. Exactly how it played out. Maybe modest assessment of things as well. Here goes Sep for Marke then. Ah, listen to this. He's back. Not the top step. A welcome sight for Flemish bike racing fans. In this edition of Gent Wevelgem in Vlaandersfields. Twice second in this race. And on the podium for the third time, this time as the third place finisher. First the other day in Arlbeke, the winner here a couple of years ago. He's now a second place finisher today. With a beautiful present for his teammate. Christophe Laporte. The first French winner in 26 years of Kent Wevelkem in Flanders Fields. Race day number five of the season. And it's one of the best days of his career. Well, the sponsors are here to give out the flowers. And the Flemish Minister for Sport is here as well. Christophe Laporte gets those prizes. We have a trophee gaat over handig worden door de 
And it's the local mayor who's here to hand the trophy. Jint Wervelkem in Flanders Fields won by Christophe Laporte. They'll take his bottle of bubbly. But with what's to come later on this week, there'll be not too much of drinking of that stuff. And there we go. Oh dear. I hope he doesn't do that if he wins next Sunday. For once, Van Fanart fluffs his lines. You'd think he'd be used to it by now. But thankfully, on the road, all went well. The numbers one, two, and three. And it's Christophe Laporte who's at the top of the tree. Laporte, Van Aert, Van Marke. The podium at the end of Jens Wevelkim in Flanders Fields as it's ridden for the 85th time. Excellent stuff from Laporte, Jumbo Visma, and the entire field for completing a hard, horrific day out there on the bike today. We've come to the end of Jens Wevelkim in Flanders Fields. Thanks for watching from me, Rob Hatch, and all the team. We'll see you soon. More to come on Wednesday as we build up to the mighty Ronde van Vlaanderen.